So today was basically just a blast from the past for me. I've been having Occupy flashbacks all day. Ooh, let me get my knee brace off. Hang on. Caboose, you have no idea. I have, I have, I got info. Ain't nobody talking about. We'll see if you know about the cherry on top. We'll, we'll see. Um. <sighs> um, yeah. James can come to me for twos. <laughs> James can come to me. Um, so let's start. Let's kill the music. Let's start. Um, Cat's already going to DM. Cat, Cat got up, briefed just moments ago. Cat's going to try and get a hold of Vosh, too. Um, okay. So where do we begin? Let's begin. Let's begin with Occupy. Um, <laughs> Occupy was hastily thrown together. It was decentralized. There was no core message. And as such, when the news media came knocking, 
the representatives that were chosen and or put forward and or volunteered more often than not that spoke to local, regional, and national news were not up to the task because whether people want to admit it to themselves or not, when an individual speaks to an entity such as CNN or MSNBC or Fox News, it is a PR push. It is about public relations. And when you engage somebody like Fox News, it is an adversarial relationship. Now, one of the lessons we learned during Occupy, well, some of us learned these lessons, was that despite not wanting centralized leadership, despite, despite having a distributed nature, what one must do is select someone with the expertise and the optics to speak to these entities. Now, we shot ourselves in the foot during the Occupy mo movement. And I would have liked to avoid that as much as possible today, but that's not what happened. Um, the bad optics that Occupy put forward in the form of news media interviews probably set the labor movement back a decade. I'm just going to be honest about that. Self-analysis. We, we probably set the labor movement about, back about a decade. Today, yesterday... Yesterday, I think I witnessed one individual setting back the labor movement at least a few years. Uh, the individual that was put forward. Now, I say put forward because there is some disagreement in certain circles, whether this was a decision amongst the mods <clears throat> or a unilateral decision by this individual. But what I can tell you is that the individual that did the interview with Fox News, with Jesse Waters, was not chosen by the community. Doreen was, when this was bro broached to the anti-work community, the community said, fuck Fox News, don't do the interview. Now, what you have to understand is that that's not an option. That's short-sighted. Um, the producers of the show um, and the show as an entity would have continued to seek out someone to speak on the part of anti the anti-work subreddit slash movement, right? That wasn't an option. So it was short-sighted on the community to make that, de make that decision. But the wishes of the greater community were not adhered to or followed. <clears throat> Somewhere behind the scenes, a decision was made amongst the mods that... Doreen would be the one to do the interview because they, and I say they because I've seen Doreen's pronouns listed as her. I've, I've seen them also listed as non-binary, so I don't know. I am defaulting to they for safety's sake. But Doreen was the one that was put forth because Doreen stated that they had experience conducting these sorts of interviews before. Now, we don't need to actually watch the interview. If somebody wants to, we can, but the fact of the matter is, is that it's not necessary. Doreen was, I'm going to be brutally honest here. This is a game of optics. This is a, press, uh, a public relations issue. And you're going into an adversarial interview. Jesse Waters is a clean-cut, white, straight, cisgendered male in a tailored suit and tie with an education.
Doreen. Doreen is somewhere on spectrum, is somewhat trans or NB, suffers from multiple mental illnesses, clearly had not bathed in quite some time, had all of the appearance of a bedroom dweller, had the depression nest behind them, chose not to put on any presentable clothing, nor brush their hair even, was in no way, shape, or form prepared to talk about the nuances, let alone the broad strokes, the overarching messages of the anti-work movement, Com- showed up completely unprepared, both visually and materially. Jesse Waters did not do a bad faith interview. He laughed. He giggled. He had some snide remarks, for sure. I hate life. But he did not conduct a bad faith interview. Doreen shot us in the foot. Doreen came out and did the absolute worst possible thing for the movement. Fox News got exactly what they wanted. They got a nebulously gendered depression Sp- sp- depression spiraled, unbathed, lazy millennial who didn't know what they were talking about. Their viewers, their producers, and Jesse Waters ate it right up. It was exactly what they wanted. It was exactly what they needed. And Doreen served it to them on a fucking platter. Yes. I don't know, Caboose. Here's my question. I have two. One, if this individual was it ego, tell me it was ego, Doreen. Tell me that you really thought in your delusionary state, in your mental illness-filled state, in your just absolute deluded mentality, that you were the right person for the job and you could kill this. Please tell me this. Because the only other option I'm left with is a very succinct question. Doreen, how much did Fox News pay you to shoot the anti-work movement in the foot? Because that's what they did. They went on national TV in prime time, evening news, one of the most viewed slots, and literally pulled out a fucking pistol and just shot the anti-work movement dead in the fucking face. Live on TV. How much did you get paid for for that then? Now, here's what nobody else has. Lots of people have talked about this, right? I have evidence that Doreen is even further from the appropriate person for this. Doreen isn't an innocent victim in all of this. Doreen is a highly disturbed individual. I have copies of Doreen's Facebook posts that have since been pulled. And in which they admit to sexually assaulting their previous partner, who already had PTSD from previous assaults. Doreen is an abuser on top of everything else. So, the individual, 
Yes, she posted it the same day on Facebook as the day of the Fox interview. So the individual who did the anti-work interview on Fox Subject is on Spectrum, is non-binary or trans, suffers from multiple mental illnesses per their own admission within those Facebook posts, was clearly in a depression spiral, was clearly unprepared for the interview, did have, had zero understanding of public relations, had zero understanding of the anti-work movement as a concept philosophically or ideologically, and is a hugely problematic individual to boot. And this individual is the one who thought either they were qualified to take on this role as representative of the entirety of the anti-work movement and the 1.2 million members of the anti-work subreddit, or they were manipulated into that position, or they were paid to be in that position. I have the screenshots. They were given to me securely today by somebody who was entrusted with them. They've been pretty cleaned up around various places. There were whispers. I traced the whispers. I figured out who had what. I contacted them. Via back channels and secure methods, they were sent to me. I have six pages of screenshots in which she openly admits to her sexually assaulting a partner who is already struggling with PTSD or a previous partner who was already struggling with PTSD and was sensitive to such uh, uh, um, <clears throat> malfeasances. And Doreen openly admits that at the time they knew this, they were aware of this, there was even recompense discussion, uh, discussed as to whether Doreen should be the one to pay for the person's further therapy. But given Doreen's lack of income and the person's insurance, it was decided that the person should just use their insurance to cover the further therapy that would be necessary for the damage done by Doreen during the sexual assault of this individual. Now, I will tell you, I won't go into the details. Um, if somebody has just cause to ask me for these screenshots, I will provide them. Somebody like James, somebody like Vosh. If they want proof, I can provide proof. I will characterize it as as uncomfortable, as, as untasteful, as distasteful as it is. On the spectrum of sexual assault, it is not the most serious. It, it, it isn't the I held them down and penetrated them territory of sexual assault, but it is most assuredly a violation of consent. It is a violation of trust. It is a violation of physical boundaries. It is a violation of expressed will. Um, so yes, the individual who basically ruined the anti-work movement could not have been the better, the, uh, there could not have been a better person to ruin the anti-work movement. As far as I'm concerned, this was wholly the wrong person to go on Fox News and discuss this. The truth of the matter is, is that it was, I don't, I can't speak to that, Caboose. I cannot speak to that. I don't know. Um, the truth of the matter is, is that given the venue, given the adversarial nature of the interview, given who was conducting the interview, that should have been 
a cisgendered, straight-passing, white male in polo and khakis, if not a suit and tie, with a curriculum vitae, or a CV, very thick, with academic experience and many years working in the professional, in various professional fields, if not one dedicated professional field, who was who could discuss the anti-work movement in detail or in broad strokes if called upon. What was put forth was exactly the opposite of that. As to why that situation occurred, I do not know. I can't speak to that. But what I can speak to is that I do know that that person is a toxic individual I do know that that person is a sexual assaulter. I do know that that person is exactly what Fox News viewers wanted that person to be. (sighs) So. As an Occupy organizer, as a former Occupy organizer... I spent the day basically, one, chasing down leads. Um, This individual also worked for the Center for a Stateless Society, um, also worked for, um, hang on, I can get you, give me one sec, forgive me. Um, Okay. They also worked for the Center for a Stateless Society, was, in ver- was very involved with the Alliance of the Libertarian Left and the Association of Libertarian Feminists. So... I basically spent the day um, chasing down leads and just living flashbacks to the Occupy days where just shit Fox News interviews, shit local interviews by dirty hippie types that didn't were not prepared to express the concerns, the core values, the ideologies that underpinned the movement as its as a whole. And fundamentally, I do believe in my heart of hearts that with this one interview, Doreen and whoever may have manipulated or cajoled or cajoled and connived or not, whatever orchestrations or lack thereof that led to this scenario occurring, non-binary, yes, it is. See, this is, this is what, this is what you, this is what people don't understand. Yeah, it is. It really is. One shit interview is the voice of an entire movement. It really is. Bingo, beast. This is politics. Optics is everything. With that one interview, the labor movement was set back. Not just the anti-work movement. The labor movement. And I agree, Kat. The literal only option is to disavow on all fronts. This was bad. This was bad. It was very bad. And there's no way around it. It was bad for marginalized communities because the individual who did this was on spectrum in some capacity, was trans in some capacity, was has mental illness of some capacity. 
So there's a multitude of marginalized communities there that are going to be raked over the coals as a result of this. The generational issue came up. Lazy millennial doesn't want to work, doesn't even want to bathe. That got brought up amongst the Fox comments. And of course, the labor movement as a whole was damaged in this perception. Yeah, this was a very bad day. Jack, a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people want fucking blood, to be perfectly honest. There were, there were some very explicit calls um, that, yeah. <clears throat> you can disavow, but the truth of the matter is, is the damage is done. Damage is done. Tech support, it's a bit to catch you up, but... Um... The anti-work, the person who gave the Fox News anti-work movement, um, well, this is the other, this is the other meta discussion being had behind the scenes. Um, the anarchist circles are rightly pissed because anti-work is an anarchist movement. It's an anarchist idea, right? Anti-work is born of Bob Black, basically. It is an anarchist idea. And anti-work as a subreddit became lib. The general milieu, the general uh, populace, the, the liberals of today invaded. They came in. They wanted worker reforms rather than anti-work. They didn't understand nor were they prepared to understand what was actually being discussed. They're not philosophically, uh, philosophically or ideologically capable of having that discussion. And so what became, what became of the anti-work subreddit quickly became milk toast worker reform. And so now you can see this in the split subreddit called worker reforms where the libs say the problem was these radicals talking about anti-work. What we really just want is a couple of extra, you know, paternity days off and maybe like, you know, better pay. They've compromised. They've watered it down to the point where nothing matters. And now... Fundamentally, the lightning rod that took this lightning bolt was this individual. It was Doreen. Doreen allowed this to happen. The catalyst for this to occur was this singular mod. Whether anybody likes, likes it, whether anybody wants to admit it, whether it's fair whether you feel it should be that way or it shouldn't be that way, doesn't matter. This was a game of public perception. It was a game of perception management, which, by the way, is what the CIA calls psychological operations these days. PSYOPs is actually called perceptions management. This was a game of perceptions management. And... The person who just gave the interview for anti-work tanked it so hard and was such a shit human being that they did do irreparable damage to the movement to the extent that now 
the anti-work movement is now co-opted by neoliberals and is asking for nothing more than mild worker reforms. This is the damage one interview can do. This is the damage one person can do. Oh, yeah, anti-work is in private. <laughs> yeah, anti-work's in private. Because after the members um, rightly started calling, screaming for heads, they started mass bans. And when the mass bans didn't work, they took the pr a subreddit private. And if you don't think F Fox News is going to do a follow-up on this, tech support, one mod, one mod. And the mod is a sexual abuser. I have the proof. It was sent to me anonymously today. I have the Facebook posts in which that person in the interview admits to sexually assaulting their partner who had PTSD from prior assaults. So the person who did the interview was autistic, was trans, was in a depression spiral, was unwashed, unkempt, did not change their clothes from the in for the interview, was sitting in their depression hovel with a filthy microwave behind them and clothes and things strewn all about, was not prepared to talk about the topic at hand, could not discuss anti-work in any nuanced level, let alone broad strokes, gave Fox News and Jesse Waters exactly what they wanted. Some gender nebulous, lazy millennial who is too, uh, too, uh, too lazy to even wash themselves, demanding free money. And they don't know about the sexual assault yet. But they'll probably find out. I'm one of a few that know. I'm one of a few that have the receipts at this point. And like I said... James from the internet wants to talk to me, he can talk to me. If, he uh, if fucking Vosh wants to talk to me, he can talk to me. I will provide the screenshots to the people that should have the screenshots. I'm not going to be putting them on the air. I'm not going to be putting them in the Discord server. But if you have a credible reason to want to see these screenshots, I will provide them. Um... And as I said, it's not the worst of sexual assaults. It's not pinning someone down in a dark alleyway and penetrating them sexual assault. But it is a complete betrayal of trust. It is a complete removal of consent. It is a physical boundary violation. It is in that sort of thing. It is, it's, it's sexual assault. It, it meets the, legal, the, the credible legal definition. Um, so, yeah, that's what happened to Antiorch today. A, sex, a, a sexual abuser with no business discussing the movement who was the exact wrong person to do a Fox News interview went and did a Fox News interview. And as I said, Jesse Waters did not act in bad faith. He just sat there and grinned. He just sat there and grinned. He asked a few questions, fair questions. He just asked a few fair questions and then laughed because the person who was doing the interview was so ill-prepared that they literally set the entirety of the labor movement back years. Years. If you think that this isn't going to be a thing, then you did not live through Occupy. I've seen this before. I'm seeing it again. I know what this does. This was a turning point. This is what the system needed. This was the chink in the armor of the labor movement. This was the, this was the crack in the artifice of the anti-work movement. This is exactly what they wanted. This is exactly what they needed. And it was given to them on a silver fucking platter.
I haven't seen how Cat is defining Dig. I, I I've already rehashed it a couple of times. Um, it was a thing. Yeah, Cat's not Cat's Cat's being yeah Cat's being an opportunist. Um, dude, Wither, they weren't mentally ready. They weren't physically ready. They were not the person for it. As I stated, unequivocally. Oh, and thank you for the the Daddy Bezos bucks, Diggs. Um, fucking three months. Fuck yeah. Um, there should have been a cisgendered, white, straight passing at least, heterosexual style male in polo and khakis, if not a three-piece suit and tie with a thick curriculum vitae or what the people who do large like huge careers right academic and then professional careers they have what's called a curriculum vitae rather than a resume right and it, it documents the entirety of their 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 past basically everything they've done he should have he should have had a fucking curriculum vitae demonstrating his academic expertise his real world career expertise and he should have been ready to discuss the nuanced and they fuck yeah because it's about optics. It's not about representing the marginalized communities. It's not about playing that game. It's about getting in under Fox News's radar. It's about disabling the bigotry that you're going to face on Fox News. It's about bypassing and just shuck, you know, fucking shucking and jiving the, the, the bullshit that Fox News is going to do because they want you to be a lazy millennial. They want you to be some weird marginalized outlier group that doesn't fit within their traditional conservative narrative, right? If you can fit their narrative and still have this opinion and discuss it at an elevated level, you disarm and disable all of those traps. It was about PR. It was about optics. It wasn't about having an academic ivory tower discussion amongst ourselves where we discuss ontological reasoning behind blah, 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 blah. You're going on Fox News with Jesse Waters in a primetime slot. It should have been straight white, dude with a fucking CV a mile thick who could literally beat Jesse Waters in any level of discussion. Prepared to the nth degree to run circles around him to discuss either the kid, the kindergarten version of anti-work and why it is a thing or if he asks a pointed question to smack him upside the head with some highly nuanced academic level understanding of economics, human psychology, and the fundamental underpinnings of what the anti-work movement is addressing without, oh, with, oh, throughout the inequity and inequality in society. The person who was there was not prepared to do that. So, thanks. I guess. <sighs> okay, Cassidy. Well, no, it's just because it is an open platform, Caleb. But you can build resiliency in. You can build resiliency in. Um, but it wasn't done. So. Uh, and I'm not on the anti-work mod team. Hey, whatever for twos. Um, I like I said, I'm not on the anti-work mod team. 
Um, but I'm privy to things. And, yeah. I think there's blame to go around. But at the end of the day... <sighs> yeah, Wither, I'm not one of the power mods. Um... Yeah, it was it was bad. Uh, Jack, I agree. The no nobody on the mod team should have done it. The community, on the other hand, was short sighted. They wanted to give Fox News the cold shoulder. That's not the correct option. Fox News would have found a representative for the anti work movement, no matter what. The anti work subreddit should have realized that this was going to happen one way or the other with or without them. And they needed to put their best foot forward. This is where Occupy... Fair enough, Bobby. Um, this is where Occupy floundered. This is one of the lessons. See the title. The title of the stream is r slash anti-work, inside info and after action, lessons from an Occupy organizer. Hi, my name's Kai. I'm a former Occupy organizer. This is where we fucked up. We thought we could ignore them. We thought we could just talk around them. So they sought out anyone. Local news would just walk up to people on the street. Fox News found what they deemed a representative for Occupy in New York and put them on the air. And they were wholly unprepared. And they got bodied on the national news. And it made us look like a joke. It happened all over again. It happened all over again. And I got to tell you, <sighs> Cave, Cat, is, Cat has already expressed that same sentiment. Here's the truth. Here's the, here's the scary truth. You, you guys want, you guys want, you want something you, you're not ready for? A bunch of you aren't ready for this. Vosh would have killed that interview. Vosh would have destroyed it. He would have bodied Jesse Waters. He would have known what he needed to do going in. He would have known that, like, you have to, you know, br brush your fucking hair, clean your fucking teeth, show up presentable. He would have known how to handle the, what was going on. Vosh would have fucking destroyed that interview. But instead, we got what we got. <sighs> it's not a good day for the labor movement, guys. It really isn't. It really isn't. And as much as I don't want to blame this one person, Doreen, unless someone can provide me evidence of coercion, I'm sorry, but this person is to blame. So, it is what it is. Also, I don't defend sexual abusers. Sorry. For those out there that, because there are people, especially on Reddit, they're like, this is just people are coming out because they're being ableist and transphobic. They're just, that's why they're fucking dogpiling this person. Yeah, you know what? I have receipts. I don't fucking, I don't defend sexual abusers. Right? Get them the help they need. Make sure they can't harm others. But if you ask me to go f to bat for them, especially when public relations slash optics are concerned, and we're talking about the future of the labor movement as a whole, stay out of my way. I'll run you over in the parking lot, right? 
for those of you who don't know, it's a quote from one of my previous teachers. <laughs> he was talking about um, after the Columbine shooting. He was telling us, like, just don't get in my way in the parking lot. If there's a school shooting, I'll fucking run you over, right? Like, I'm out of here. I don't, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna play, right? I ain't gonna mince words, right? Like, this person shot the movement in the fucking face, let alone the foot. Like, just straight up went on fucking national news, pulled out a blunderbuss, and shot us in the fucking face. And I find out this person is a sexual abuser to boot. Yeah. Yeah, fuck them. Fuck them. I don't mind throwing them under the bus. <clears throat> Karina, they did a pre-show interview. They did a pre-show interview. That's just standard policy. They did a Zoom call. I look forward to hearing it, Bobby. Um, they did a pre-show Zoom call. They knew what this person looked like. They knew the state of that room. They knew. They're like, this is exactly what we need. Oh, they didn't handpick. They didn't handpick this person. Resolution. They approached the fucking mod team. Yeah, Fox News approached the anti-work mod team. They sent a message to the mods. It goes out via mod mail. Fox didn't handpick this person. The picking of this person happened at the mod team level. And according to what I understand from behind the scenes, Doreen put themselves forward stating unequivocally they have prior experience doing this sort of interview. Yeah, I would, Karina. <clears throat> the anti-work mods, Jack. The anti-work mods. That's who. Oh, Wither, I'd love to know. I certainly would love to know whether, wouldn't you? After this debacle, wouldn't it be really interesting to know what that prior experience was? Because I certainly would love to know. Oh, this person has basically gone no contact with her. Doreen has dropped off the fucking face of the planet. So... <laughs> Catica. Um, you want something to even you want something to feed your conspiratorial thinking? Doreen's account once the um, once the subreddit was pr uh, set to private. So the su the anti work subreddit went private. That means all messages on your account in your post history get hidden in that process. So if you go to Doreen's account, there is only two comments on that account outside of anti-work. Doreen's entire Reddit account history is basically just anti-work. There's no real Doreen outside of anti-work. <clears throat> like I said I don't know all I know is I have questions I don't think so I don't think so Um, I don't think so I don't think that there's an uh, that it's an op I don't think Doreen's an op I don't think that it was but part of me can't help but think about it given the fact that this interview was literally the, it was everything. It was the checklist. It was the checklist. If you were on the other side of this fence, if you were one of the capitalistic owners, you could not have asked for anything more. You couldn't have. So... 
Aka, you just gotta have, at this point, you're just gonna have to go back to the beginning of the stream. Sorry, Aka. It's a whole fucking tale. <clears throat> Mm. Non-binary. Sure. Sure. If anybody needs someone to talk about and talk on the subject, I'll talk to somebody. Yeah. Um, what's up, Fire? Uh, Big Bear, we just got done basically um talking about the top the the subject of the day. Yeah. Um, uh, Whether wildcat strikes are illegal. Let's see if I can. I want seven. There we go. Um. Wildcat strikes are um, strikes that take place outside of the leadership of a union. So the union leadership has to sign off on strikes. Wildcat strikes are where the union leadership refuses to sign off on a strike and the union membership says, we're striking anyway. That's a wildcat strike. Um, and they are illegal. As are solidarity strikes, as are general strikes. If you don't know what a general strike is, it's not just like union members going out and striking. That's not a general strike, it's everybody striking. So. Uh, anybody wanna see the uh, 52 year old Ukrainian lady? Oh, property party, you adorable fuck. Uh, what, uh, fucking wildcat strikes were made illegal during the Taft-Hartley Act of 1937, 1947. 47. Um, the Taft-Hartley Act uh, explicitly makes these illegal. If we need to pull up the Taft-Hartley Act, we can. But union organizing is something that I have talked about at length. That's not what a wildcat strike is. Uh, but if you leave your job right now, you could end up in jail based off of that last injunction. Also, depending on your job, um, see the air traffic controller strikes under the Reagan administration. The federal government stepped in and threatened them with jail time as well. Um, no, no, no. Is it? There we go. Uh, yes, the Taft Hartley Act, also known as the Labor Management Relations Act of 1947. Let's see. Absolutely forbid jurisdictional strikes, a means to protest as a taking away of work from members and giving it to other members, such as union or non-union workers. Wildcat strikes, the striking of union members without union leadership approval. Solidarity or political strikes, aka a general strike in which a substantial proportion of the total labor pool in a given area strikes for reasons not necessarily stemming from their workplace dire place directly. Secondary or solidarity strikes, a form of striking that is designed to aid and show support for a fellow group of or group of workers. Bass picketing which should be self-explanatory, and the practice of closed shops in which unions reach security agreements with employers to hire only union members, as well as donations from unions to federal political campaigns, all made illegal under the Taft-Hartley Act 
1947. Uh, in fact, it is, um, and it has been invoked numerous times. So again, these are topics that I write about, that I talk about, that I organize about. Like this is, <laughs> yeah. Like that was, the Taft-Hartley Act was the death blow to collectivized worker empowerment in America. Were you alive during the Reagan administration, Hidden Branch? You weren't, were you? You're like 12, aren't you? Um, in fact, the federal government has invoked these powers before. On a national scale. Yes, I was. I'm, I'm coming up on 40. Sorry, Pookie. Yeah. Uh, in fact, an injunction was issued against uh, workers attempting to leave their job just the other day. The legalized uh, mechanisms of controlling workers in this country are subtly used throughout the, uh, throughout the year. Wildcat strikes or the Ill illegality of wildcat strikes are used on a near daily basis within union, uh, collectivized union structure, uh, organizational structures on a national basis. If you want to strike as a uh, union member, you have to get the sign off from your union leadership or else it is deemed an illegal strike and subject to police action. This is why you don't see workers just walking off the job and striking because they have to get the sign off from union leadership first. Happens every day in this country. Just because you don't see it and just because you haven't experienced it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Astounding. Wait, no. Better yet. Amazing. No, I'm not. But you can you can look up the Taft Hartley Act yourself, because I don't argue with people who have nothing to argue with. All you have is your bullshitting. I have citations of legal acts. I have an understanding of uh, union methodologies and organizing. You just sit there and go, no. Try bringing something to the table to argue with next time. Otherwise, leave the room, children. The adults are talking. No, I'm not. I'm discussing specifically the core legal act that con uh, constrains and controls organizing, union organizing, and collective action in this country. The Taft-Hartley Act, a.k.a. the Labor Relations Act of 1947, which was in direct response to the Labor Relations Act of 1935, which codified the uh, unionizing and the uh, striking structure in this country. And after roughly a decade, the controllers and the owners of this country found that untenable, and so they rolled it back with the Taft-Hartley Act. So... Oh, and now he's screaming. Pookie. Aww. Caleb, there's no point. This? Oh, correct. Yeah, I've, I've always worn that. But yes. Karina, I do too. I want it back badly. But I don't have time for individuals who refuse to acknowledge 
legal precedent, the history of the United States, common sense. Yeah. So if he wants to throw a tantrum like a child and leave, that's fine. But he provides nothing as a counter to what I have stated. All he does is go, no, and then storms off. So, okay. That's, that's fine. It is true, Jack. It is true. Um, hey, Cass. Thanks for the lala. He didn't even debate bro well, and that's annoying. Also, if he wants to play logic games, he's committed to come fallacy fallacy. I too am a debate bro. Can he tell? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't. I bet he was a right libertarian. Oh, they're adorable. So, I don't know what y'all want to talk about, but I mean, that's. I literally just. I spent the day on the one story and. Uh, no, not necessarily nonsense. I did see fucking Jordan Peterson say that uh, climate isn't a thing. That climate doesn't exist. God, that was painful. Um. Ah, thank you. Hey, uh, HBIC, should I just be saying the HBIC? Or is there some mechanism to state say your name? Like, is it phonetic? Is it like, is it, or should I just be saying HBIC? Um. Either way, thank you. No, 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 no! Climate is everything. It's foolish that you can claim you can model it. Yeah, it was, dude. For Tuesday, that was painful to watch. That was painful. Hey, Justin. What'd you guys get up to? How you doing? How was your stream? I'm good? Cool. HBSC. I'll, I'll run with it. Um, how was your stream? What'd you guys get up to? We, I dished some dirt that other people aren't privy to. Um, including anybody who's covered anti-work, the anti-work study today. Nobody had the chair. Has anybody? Anybody. Some of you watched Hassan. Some of you have heard the others. Has anybody fucking, you seen a single fucking person talk about the aspect that I had? I'm the only fucking one. I'm breaking this story. Like, this is, this is mine. Like, I own this one, I guess. <laughs> uh, you listened to the Kid Rock song and sang it to chat. Oh, Justin. The one where he, uh, he talks about, like, uh, fucking unity and then, like, talk shit. Copyright the story. Nah, I'm good. Um... Karina, my source per doesn't need to be dependable. I have the screenshots of the person's Facebook posts themselves. Justin, yes. Yeah, it's 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 an interesting song. Oh, idiots, fucking it's in the past. Story published the story as an NFT. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, cricks, you you meant the uh, the fucking VIP, yeah. You did. You missed a news bomb. So, yeah. I, I, hey, Glazy. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's an aspect of the story that needs spoken about. It doesn't, I don't think it changes the tone, the overall tonality of the story, but I think it's an element of the story that is necessary to contribute to the story. And I think that, it's worth mentioning. It shouldn't be the core of the story, um, but it definitely needs mentioning. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but Dung Goof does an NFT. Caboose. 
I'm not allowed to see. Yeah. Yeah. Get help if you need help. You did, Caleb? You got the link? Thanks for the follow remove. Um, you got the link, Caleb? Hook it up. We'll watch it. Ka Doreen claimed... Yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah. There's no... Like, I don't fucking... Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not like those other fucking channels. I run my own bot. Not, fucking... It's not gonna be like fucking, you know, Instaban sort of shit where you, get, you post a link. Uh... All right. What do we got? All right. Welcome back to St. Louis Talk. This one is safe work conditions and stuff like that. Effort or and so many people responded. So I, I thank you for your time here today. Maybe we can start by explaining this anti-work movement. Sure. Um, yeah. So first off, obviously a big um, sort of like misinterpretation that folks give us is that we're against effort or we're against people taking joy in the things that they do in their lives. Um, and I think the biggest thing to take away from it is, like, that's actually what we want to increase in people's lives, not diminish. So the way that we look at work, the way that we look at the workplace is an area that a lot of Americans, a lot of people all over the world are very disgruntled with, uh, frustrated by. First off, where was this Doreen? Where, where, where was this Doreen on the day of the interview? What happened? Who, where, was, where was this person? They don't feel hurt by their bosses, um, and they don't feel like they're getting paid well enough. They feel like maybe they're living in unsafe work conditions and stuff like that. So these are things that drive us to basically say, okay, like this needs to be better. This needs to uh, not just be better, but like we need to radically kind of uproot the way that we uh, kind of, uh, you know, live in accordance with work. Um, you know, a lot of people like to strive towards a work-life balance. Bobby, I know, but compared to the Fox interview... But we're basically saying that people should have this the is life night part and day. of that way more than they have the work balance. You know, you shouldn't be worrying about your rent and stuff like that every single week. Like, you should be able to enjoy your life and, you know, take pride and joy in the things that you do and the things that you love. So um, that's that's a little bit about it in, in, in a few words. So does that exist now for some people and not others? And the whole point of the movement would be to try to make that exist for everyone? Yeah. I, the, so the, I'm glad you said it like that because the header of the subreddit, uh, and we just hit, we're almost up to 550,000 uh, people. So there's a lot of people who are interested in the movement. Not Bobby, it's a fucking shit show. Everyone there, of course, completely agrees with it or, or is a, you know, total radical or something like that. But we have a lot of people very interested in this conversation and the header of the subreddit is unemployment for everybody, uh, not just the rich. And what that means is, you know, obviously rich folks. I got to tell you, I'm a little bothered by this. I'm not sure how to feel about this. So when doing regional talk radio, Doreen managed to launch a convincing Cassie, yeah, it makes me wonder too. This is this is problematic on a level that I didn't expect. Folks, um, they, they often get to uh, choose whether to work. Now, obviously, many rich people, you know, Hollywood actors, um, people who you know, people who play sports, uh, celebrities, like they do obviously Kaiser. many things in their life, right? They're not just doing nothing, but they obviously have that choice. And a lot of common people, a lot of everyday people, um, a lot of families, a lot of communities um, are really torn apart by the way that work operates in our economy. And so um, what we really want to do is make sure that no, we have a society where everybody kind of chaotica, go watch the interview. It isn't adversary. It really isn't. It really isn't dude. Jesse waters fucking like it, it, Honestly, no, Chaotica, I'm telling you, it's not a bad interview. It's fucking, he asked questions and a couple of, like a couple of his re like responses were mildly smarmy, but not 
you could roll with it. You could roll with it. It's has that life where they can choose how much work that they that they want or effort, you know, or whatever that they want to put into their lives. This makes um, they me, don't feel crushed by their God, job. This makes they me even more like conspiratorially every morning minded. When they wake up on a Monday, they're like, "Oh God, I have to do this again for a week and then have the weekend off," which isn't even true for some people who work in retail. This is audio um, only. So yeah, so that's kind of a little bit about what we're going for. Hey, hey Dory, have you ever seen the show Dirty Jobs? You ever seen yes, that? I have uh, with Mike Rowe, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great show. Showed the you know the the hardest things that people had to do. If you yeah. like going to concerts or an outdoor event, and they have Johnny on the spots, uh, under your uh, mantra, there would be nobody if if you you know if if this abolished work got you know taken off and it took over. Okay, the country, let's see. This is a fair challenge. This Johnny is a fair challenge. Spot. There would be nobody let's see what... that would want to. You know, slop pigs so we could have bacon. So I, I don't understand. I, I think of the coal miners back in the day. So, what about the things that have to get done? Who's going to do that? For sure, that's a great question, and we get that question a lot. Um, so thanks for that. Um, so a lot of the um, jobs that people uh, don't enjoy doing, I think the reason why is because often uh, work is a very um, individualistic effort. Um, it's something that can be done by communities, by families, by people, and it can often be cycled. The reason why, um, you know, people who do their jobs on farms or people who do more agrarian or, or dirty jobs, as Micro likes to talk about, the reason those jobs suck so much for those people um, is partially because of the sort of conditions surrounding that. So whether it be pay or whether it be the fact that they're understaffed or overworked, um, you know, uh, I, I work with, jo- I work with dogs, right. And a lot of people, um, think, wow, that's such a dream job. And like, there's definitely times where I think that's great, but yeah, I'm a little freaked out. <sighs> Caleb, good find. Good job, Caleb. Where was this person? Whoever this person, given this interview, where was this person when Jesse Waters needed an interview? I, I got questions now. I got questions. Dude, it, it took me an hour to elucidate the entirety of the story. I'm not going through it again. If somebody wants to try and summarize it for you in chat, feel free. But probably buying a plane ticket. Maybe cave, but it's pre-recorded. It's not live. They're on a delay either way. Like it's not fucking, it's just you and a fucking zoom camera and Jesse waters. Um, Yeah, I'm a little perturbed by this. I'm a little perturbed by this. <sighs> I wonder what the... F- don't know. I don't know. Well, then too fucking bad. Um... Uh, no, Glazy. Um, well, we did have one idiot that fucking was like a Ben Shapiro watcher, apparently. Um, it is far more nuanced and broad of a topic than just that property. Um, we did have one Ben Shapiro watcher that, uh, read about, um, 
uh, the uh, nature of the Taft Hartley Act, but uh, yeah, I think Vosh is banned, isn't he? Is Vosh allowed on Twitch? If I don't think Vosh is allowed on Twitch. Um. Yeah, that I know about. So I saw the link. Yeah, here's here's the like yeah, that's the Facebook stuff. Um Oh shit, we did we did that just come back? Okay, no. Climate is climate is nothing and everything. Vosh would have killed that interview. Vosh would have killed that interview. Rex, I agree. It has nothing to do with liking Vosh or disliking Vosh. It has to understand. Uh, it's the uh, ability to recognize a skilled rhetorician. Um, what was necessary for the Jesse Waters interview was a skilled rhetorician, um, of which Vosh is one. He would have killed the interview. I don't think he agrees with the anti-work movement as a concept, so he would have been an inappropriate choice to be a representative for anything of that nature, but to say that he wouldn't have killed that interview is to deny his skill as an orator and a rhetorician. It's just the fact of the matter. Do you know the difference between intelligence and uh, rhetor um, being a skilled rhetorician? Do you even know what a rhetorician is? Do you know what an orator is? Do you understand the difference? Because it seems that you don't. Yeah, he, he would be, um, he, he definitely would have been uh, a reformer rather than an anti-worker. Yeah. <laughs> Mosh. <laughs> uh... Nah, it's okay, Amash. I get it. Um. Oh, hey, Emin. Yeah, for sure. There it is. There it is. Fucking, he's totally a pedo and probably down the furry rabbit hole also. There it is, conflating the two. Hey, property party. You're the, you're the, uh, you're the first, you're the first candidate for tonight. You want to come on air and actually have a discussion? You want to engage in the dialectical exercise? You want to utilize your own rhetorical device? Come on air. Then why are you here? Or do you have burgers to flip? Hey, Ammon. Eh, I'm okay.
dude, I got no, I mean, furry stuff isn't my deal. Um, but I mean, do you, and to conflate pedophilia with, uh, with furrydom, uh, is bad faith at best. That's bad faith at best. At worst, it's in horsecock. <laughs> I'm like just fucking randomly horsecock. Uh, do you have any source on that cor uh, that correlative uh, that correlation that you've attempted to make? Do you have any statistical analysis, any psychology, uh, psychological analysis, any journal journal publications, any any studies that you've engaged in yourself? Uh, any hypotheses that you've tested? Uh, in fact, Jack, yes, see right up above. He did, in fact, try and do the source. Trust me, bro. So, in other words, Property Party, you're talking out of your ass. Okay. Um, well, here's, here's common sense to me. Property party is, seems overly obsessed with, uh, projecting pedophilia upon someone else. And generally speaking, when we see in commonly in society, individuals project onto others, such as pedophilia or homosexuality or deviancies of some sort that they perceive as uh, deviancies within the social norm, that they in fact themselves tend to be guilty of those deviancies as well. See Republicans who are rabidly anti-homosexual being found out to be ba um, banging rent boys on the weekend. See anti-LGBT ministers who are found to be having boyfriends on the side. So common sense tells me that since Property Party is so overly obsessed with this topic and projecting it onto others, that Property Party is probably, well, secretly a furry pedophile. It's just common sense. It's just common sense. Non-binary, these individuals can contact me directly. I don't, if Dylan wants to talk about it, Dylan can ask me about it or invite me on the air or something like that. Um, I, I will not be sending them through intermediaries. Um, I know, non-binary, I'm, you know, I will not be sending them through intermediaries if Dylan wants to ask about it or wants them and wants to talk to me about them or that sort of thing, then Dylan can ask. Um, the offer stands. If anybody has justifiable reason to have these screenshots, I am willing to share them. Um, they paint a picture of a disturbed individual behind the scenes that has transgressed. Let's just put it that way. Um... So, <laughs> um, oh, you're already down it. Yeah. Property party. I, I a hundred percent. You're already, that's your common sense tells me that your obsession with the degeneracy that is, as you perceive it to be, that is the, fur, uh, that is furrydom tells me that you are a furry at heart. You're just denying yourself that. Uh, why is Glazy getting timed out? What did Glazy do? Oh, Glazy, Glazy. How many, how many is this for you, Glazy? You know it's coming, Glazy. Fucking A. <laughs> Fucking, this is your 10th timeout, Glazy. This is your 10th timeout. Glazy, I'll see you in 10 minutes. <laughs> what, what about? Non-binary, what about that? I just addressed your PM literally on stream. I, I literally explicitly told you. 
um, that if Dylan wants those screenshots, Dylan can ask me for those screenshots. I will share them. If Dylan wants to talk to me about that and wants some inside information, I will talk to Dylan. Um, whether it's on Dylan's channel or my channel or whatever. Um, but I will not go through intermediaries with these screenshots. They will only be handed directly to. So it's up to Dylan. Um, I won't be shopping them around. Um, oh, that's, um, Mother Anarchy. Um, yeah, that's, that's Mother Anarchy. Here, I'll get you a link. There you go. Um, Aka, link in chat. The, see the YouTube link? That's Mother Anarchy Loves Her Sons. When somebody follows, it says Mother Anarchy Loves Her Sons in Ukrainian, I believe. Um, and when somebody subs, it says Anarchy Mother Anarchy is not for sale. Um, so those are the two clips. Uh, property, you've yet to show anybody as a pedophile. What evidence do you have that uh, Vosh is a pedophile? Yes, non-binary. I sent I sent Dylan a DM saying I am the holder of the problematic screenshots. If Dylan wants to respond, Dylan can respond. It's been debated. Has it been proven? Do you have any evidence of it whatsoever? Because as far as I'm concerned, Vosh has never actually been brought up on charges. There's never been any actual substantial evidence. All you have is his rhetoric for the purposes of debate. Has Vosh ever actually been proven to be a pedophile? Or do you... Many people are saying it. Yeah, exactly. Or do you just prefer to cast dispersions? Because I can cast dispersions. As far as I know, Property Party is, in fact, a furry pedophile. Now, they're going to deny it, of course. But the truth of the matter is, is that we know it. Uh, you're about to be timed out for spam. You're about to be timed out for spam. Congratulations, you're getting timed out for spam. Uh, he a, posted a quote of Vosh, supposedly. I don't know the source of this quote. He's just quoted it uh, out of context. Um, supposedly, Vosh said at some point, we have no source on this one, um, that supposedly, according to the furry pedophile, uh, also known as Property Party, because trust me, bro, he is. Um, it's possible for an adult and a child to have a sexual relationship and for it to have positive outcomes on the child as well. That is possible. According to Property Party, the, um, the furry pedophile. Um, from where? And in what, 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 in what context? Because Vosh uses edgelord tactics to uh, batter people into corners all the time. The next sentence sentence was, and even under those circumstances, we still should not allow those relationships as a rule. Uh, 
Uh, cat, we've got a we've got an idiot in chat who I'm gonna unban him now. Watch this, fucking I'll manually unban him even though he got fucking tagged for spamming the shit. Um, we got we got one of the Vosh is a pedophile crowd. Um, also he's uh, the person yelling this is a furry pedophile. Just so you know, yeah. Um, it has been confirmed because many people are saying it, including myself. Um, and that is, that is, that is their, their bar for evidentiary proceedings apparently is just people are saying it. So. Wait, the source of that quote is be is fucking like stinky taco. Nonsense. Nonsense says I was here. I saw him admit that he's a furry pedophile. It was wild. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be feeling saucy on this beat. I need a chicken wing. Um uh, What are your thoughts on Matt Gates? Uh, I bet he's a fan. Uh, I still have some leftover chili from last night. I'm going to fucking grub on after this stream. Of course, I'm going to talk to Bobby after the stream first, but yeah. I just enjoy fucking with these idiots. I don't care if Fosh is a pedophile or not. If he is, fucking. I don't think he is. But if he is, fuck it. Again, see, you know how that di that isn't difficult? But you have no evidence. Condemning someone as a pedophile, especially in a society that is, like, violently opposed to the existence of this phenomenon, to the extent of they are killed on sight, condemning somebody with that title is essentially a green light order on somebody. You are openly saying that violence is okay against that person for unsubstantiated reasons. Yeah. You don't even have a conviction. You don't even have an ac a pr proper accusation. All you have is his rhetoric that he used during a debate slash argument to put someone in a corner logically. That's all you have. You don't have any substantiation whatsoever which is fucking problematic to say the very least um which is why i'm fine doing it myself fucking property party in chat is a furry pedophile 100 percent. i have no evidence to this but their projection of it seems to coincide and correlate to the tr uh the tradition within our society of those that point out supposed deviancies and degeneracies within society and then partake in them themselves. Therefore, their just absolutely vehement opposition to furries and pedophiles seems to be in line with someone who is projecting that upon others because they themselves are one. So, I mean, it's just common sense. It's just common sense. Fucking A. And no, you you haven't provided sources. You provided an out of context quote to which to wit the finish the final uh, sentence on the quote is that that should not be allowed no matter what. You decontextualized a quote intentionally in bad faith. And then you did not provide a source for that quote at all. And it was reliant upon others in the community to provide said context for that quote, which then changes the tonality of the quote entirely. You, my friend, operate in bad faith. You, my friend, are a bad actor.
So property, what's your opinion on Matt Gates? How do you feel about Matt Gates, property party? Come on. How do you not know who Matt Gates is? What kind of property party? Are you over the age of 18? Because if you're under 18, we have to just outright ban you. How the fuck don't you know who Matt Gates is, you terminally online fuck? Like, read something. Just anything. Just pick a fucking website. Wither, that depresses me. Wither, you need to fucking read. As much time you spend on Twitter arguing with people, Wither, you should know who Matt Gates is. G-A-E-T-Z for these fuckers who don't know how to spell Matt Gates. He's a congressman. From Florida. <laughs> Panda. I'm fucking Scottish and I know who Pan Matt Gates is. Australia. Oh yeah, someone who knows this much about Vosh and doesn't know who Matt Gates is. Fucking A. Talk about terminally online, right? Fucking obsessed with Vosh potentially being a, a, a fucking pedophile and a furry, but doesn't know actual pedophiles in government. People with real power over decision making in this nation, but obsessed with Vosh being potentially being a pedophile. Fucking brilliant. Yeah, this is, yeah, exactly, Crix. Like, this is, this is, this is the problem. Like, this is literally an example of the problem. Property party is literally the problem. That's, holy shit, man. Wow. What does it feel like to be literally, uh, to literally be the problem? Uh, no, Mosh, it doesn't. Um, it, it's not. Pedophilia is actually like under, uh, uh under, uh, physical development. It's, um, that technically would be hebophilia. It's a distinction that libertarians make all the time. It's fucking cringe every time you hear it. You're like, oh God. Yeah. It's, it has to, yeah, pedophilia is kids, kids, kids prepubescent as public put it um yeah oh yeah chaotica the conflation with furrydom and pedophilia is hugely problematic on the part of fucking property party as well uh fucking so I just don't like people who argue in bad faith. 
I don't like people who use qu uh, quotes out of context. I don't like people who don't provide actual sources for their quotes. Uh, Cat, welcome to the fucking team. No, you didn't. You provided a quote, not a source. Do you not know the difference? Do you not understand the difference between a quote and a source? Wait, you... You don't, do you? You really don't. The source would be the clip of Vosh saying that quote. That is the source. The quote is just you typing some shit out, non-verbatim, out of context. How'd that, um... How'd that high school education treat you, my man? Never... Never did a bibliography? Oh. Our educational system is shit. We're fucked. 53%. Seriously, cat? God damn it. Public, 100%. 100%. 53%. 53%. I think 53, 54. If Zippy, if Zippy were here, Zippy would correct my number. Uh, 53, 54% of American uh, of American adults uh, read at a below beneath six uh, sixth grade level, fifth grade or down. 25% are functionally illiterate. Um. Oh, we have fucking, uh, let's see health literacy CDC. Understanding Literacy and Numeracy by the CDC. These are super fucking depressing. Let's see. National Assessment of Adult Literacy in the United States. Let's just go for the entirety of the PDF. We'll parse it from there. Get you the executive summary. just happened Jesus Christ <laughs> fucking entire PDF just crashed all right Fifty three percent. Fifty three fucking percent are intermediate, meaning they can read at a ninth grade level. Right. The remaining percentage or above or above, by the way, uh, proficient. The, the amount of proficient readers in America per the CDC's literacy, uh, literacy assessment, 12 percent, 12 percent is proficient uh, proficient readers in America 12 
fucking percent. Among the remaining adults, 22% had basic literacy and 14% had below basic literacy. So let's talk thresholds. Who's responsible for these? What what does this what does this mean? Right? Oh, basic indicates skills necessary to perform everyday simple literacy activities, such as being able to read a street sign. Below basic indicates no more than the most simple and concrete literacy skills. They range from being completely non-literate in English to having the ability to identify short information and uh, short information exchanges and symbols. Such things as commonplace prose, unable to understand. Intermediate is literally middle school. It's reading and understanding moderately dense, less commonplace prose texts, as well as the ability to summarize. This is the sort of thing you learn in sixth, seventh grade. Okay, proficient is lengthy, complex, and abstract uh, literacy uh, literacy topics, such as uh, uh, such as synthesizing information and making inferences. This is the sort of thing you do in high school or a collegiate level. That is proficient. Twelve percent of Americans are proficient. The statistics on literacy in America are dire. And this is literacy, not numeracy. Numeracy is even worse. Oh, Arcade, what do you mean by globalists? Who are the globalists, Arcade? Dude, public. I've told the story before. I was in um, honors British literature in 12th grade and they transferred in uh, the remedial class and I had a football player behind me attempt to read Shakespearean prose and um, he uh, he pronounced the or the as to he multiple times. He didn't know how to pronounce the word the. It's bad. It's bad. Oh, I don't have any of that information for twos. Uh, me and my buddy Alex fucking dumped out of class really fast. My teacher, we cut a deal with my teacher that we would do all of the like the, the reading assignments and the coursework as necessary, but we couldn't be in class. So she basically just taught a remedial English class, first period, and we got to stay home. We we slept in our senior year. We we had first hour off. We had two classes. We had the two in the, the, the back half off because we had finished credits. And then we got a break from the first class because they rolled in the remedial class. So we basically went to school for like three periods, I think, uh, my entirety of my senior year. Yeah, three periods. Because we had a, a roaming fifth. Um, yeah, so I have no idea. Uh, I have no idea. We, we survived, I think, the first week with that. And Alex and I pulled her aside and we're like, we can't, we, we can't, this is, this is killing me. So yeah, we, we just, it's a good deal though. Um, nice nonsense. Good on you. Occasionally I do puddle. Occasionally I have to smack him down and refute that nonsense. Um, but you know. Fair enough, cat. 
It public, tell me about it. Dude, nonsense, same, same. Not for the TV, I didn't have a TV show to do, but dude, yeah, I was fucking lit, good portion of it. Dude, I used to bring uh, fucking vodka in on uh, in water bottles. Sweet. Are we having fun yet? Oh, God, sweet. It's been a nightmare of a day. Oh, it's been a nightmare of a day. Hope you're doing okay, though, sweet. And thank you for the resub, of course. Um, Dude, dig. I hate fucking... I, I hated math. I hated math. The vodka in water bottles is a classic. It is. I got caught. Uh, but the teacher that caught me was the coolest teacher ever. Um, and he didn't give a shit. Dude, yeah, math. I checked out in trig, but I, I had a real rough ride with math because uh, when I tested in for uh, high school for my um, from middle school, um, the bitch teacher who didn't like me because the first time I showed up in her class after transfer, I had, uh, you can't see, there's it's actually a scar all the way across my finger. I basically almost took off the end of my finger. Um, I like, I couldn't write cause this entire finger was like stitched up and braced and shit. Like, and so I was like writing like this and she hated me for it. She was like, you're an inconvenience in my class. She and I had, were adversarial the entire fucking like semester. Um, when I tested out, she was my math teacher, uh, fucking pigden was what we called her. Um, when I tested out, I tested out for honors algebra two going into high school. She, uh, she recommended me for pre-algebra. Her recommendation carried more weight than my actual test scores. So when I got to high school, I got put into pre-algebra. And so I basically had to start math all over again. And so I checked out of math. I just completely fucking checked out. I was like, fuck all of this. Fuck, fuck teachers, fuck math, fuck school, fuck all of this. Like I will do what I need to, to get by, but this is bullshit. Uh... Jesus Christ, nonsense. Mm. Oh, Jesus Christ, a resolution. Uh, the plus is a cross, therefore religion, therefore no, I refuse to be indoctrinated into Christianity. <laughs> oh, I mean, dig fucking Las Vegas school schooling, right? It is, Kat, it is. 90% of academic success is just learning to be subservient and doing busy work. It really is. And I wasn't subservient to her, so. <sighs> Jesus Christ, public. Um... Oh yeah. Okay. Well, we've talked at length about the Prussian origins of the edu uh, the regimented educational system in this society, and that it is literally a classist form of eugenics. Uh, the creators and the developers of the Amer American educational system, as it stands, at least the public American uh, the American public educational system, believed in eugenics and classism. And they there's open statements by a multitude of them. Um, talking about the necessity for uneducated workers and then a learned upper class, right? Like that's the origins of the educational process in America. So, yeah. Ah. Uh, Jesus, Crimson. There's a toxic, amorous relationship between Prussia and the U.S. There is, for two, there, there really, really is. Um, oh, I never talked about on air. Uh, Americans, Americans. Um, Y'all motherfuckers need to do, there's, there's a thing we need to do, okay? Let's have a moment. Europeans and elsewheres, I'm sorry, this doesn't apply to you. Um, because y'all aren't fucking sadistic fucks. Um, Americans, we need to use the Karen energy. Okay? Especially if you're white. If you're white, okay, this this is a lesson for you, definitely. Um, next time you're in a, a like a supermarket or a retail setting, 
and they've got the cashiers just standing there, unable to sit. They don't give them a stool. They just make them stand there, which by the way, long periods of standing like that will cause hip, knee, arthritic problems, long-term, that sort of thing. Next time you're, um, you're in there, ask to talk to the manager out front by the cashiers. Ask to see, ask to speak to a manager. Do it calmly, do it rationally. Don't, don't harness the Karen energy yet, but ask to speak to a manager. I did this a couple of weeks ago. This is where it came from. I put this in the comments on the Discord server. Ask to speak to a manager, and when they come out, very calmly ask them just a series of questions. I just, you know, I have, I have a, I, I have a concern. Oh, well, what can I, what can I do for you today? What can I assist you with? Yeah, I was wondering, why do you intentionally torture your employees? I, I'm sorry, uh, what? Why, what are you? Why are you? I'm sorry, what, what are you referring to, sir? Well, why can't any of them sit? Why do you force all of your employees to just stand there subservently? What is the point behind this? Do you think that they couldn't do their job effectively being able to sit between customers? Even if they need to stand and bag something or move it across a fucking plane occasionally, they're capable of standing and sitting. Why must you force them to stand the entire time? Are you just being cruel to them intentionally? Is the point to torture your employees? Or are you just an authoritarian who gets off on other people's suffering? Have a moment. Who cares? Like I said, especially if you're white. If you're white, you can get away with this shit in all day, every day. Fucking, like I said, I, I did it. I did it. At the, I won't tell you where I did it. I did it. <laughs> I did it a couple weeks ago. Um, I did it at the weed store. Um, I, yeah, I was like, why, 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 why? And the manager just started stammering and stuttering. Because, Glazy, they should be better. They should be better than that. They're a fucking weed store. Um. Why? The, the manager started stammering and stuttering and saying, well, it's, it's, it's company policy. I said, well, then you need to talk to your general manager or your owners. Let them know that a customer lodged an official complaint with you today that I am upset by, and I will not be returning my business to places that intentionally cause their workers to suffer like this. And to be fair, I haven't been back, but that's for another reason. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, use harness the Karen energy. Yeah, Americans, because the Europeans don't do this shit. They give them chairs. Yeah, I don't drink anymore, but it would be a hell of a thing, wouldn't it? Um, Tyren. Um, yeah. Pussy. <laughs> Fucking coward. Um, release the Karen. Yeah, use it fucking complain like make a scene too not too big of a scene that like they're calling security but raise your voice a little make a point look at some other customers try and drag them into this argument even though they're going to be like oh i suddenly have lots of text messages on my phone right they don't want in on it but yeah fucking do something say some shit because that's bullshit why are we doing that yeah, so have at it. Little, little, little something for you to do next time you're feeling ornery and out in public. Ornery and out in public. Channel your inner soccer mom. <sighs> yeah, exactly. Resolution. <laughs> Instru <laughs> Instructions unclear. Ended up smashing soccer mom in parking lot.
I'd happily, I'd happily have you in the cult, public. I think we could do good work. Um, I bet public, public, be honest, be honest, public. I bet you got some mad Karen energy when you want it. Fucking, I could see, I could see you fucking handling a complaint, public. Oh, I bet you got it. I bet you got it. We just have to bring it out. <laughs> we glimpsed public's Karen energy with the clips you got. Um, I mean, look, all I'm saying is a few of us have witnessed public state that there is no such thing as racism anymore because the generous white liberal voters voted for a black president. I mean, we've seen it. There's clips. I'm just, I, people are saying. <laughs> Public, it'll be good for views. You get plenty of click throughs for it. Yeah, Dig fucking... Dig's got that, like... Dig's got the short girl scrappy vibe. Yeah. Fucking... You know when they're, like, pocket-sized? They, they tend to be feisty? That's Dig. Rip joint 2022 to 2022. Spilled the weed on the carpet. Oh. Yep. There's a reason Vosh leans into the controversy. It is good for views. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, uh, uh, Neil Young actually had his music pulled from Spotify. Neil Young was successful. He's like, it, it, for those of you who don't know, Neil Young fucking said, um, that I don't want to be on the same platform as Joe Rogan. Pull my music. And so his management got Spotify to pull his music. Neil Young is not on the same platform as Joe Rogan. He refuses to be on the same platform as Joe Rogan. So he pulls his fucking music. Yeah. Yeah, they pulled it. You can't listen to Neil Young on Spotify anymore. Uh, because I say some shit that won't. <clears throat> Let's just say... Uh... Oh, God. Which one of you idiots... Sit, look. Yeah, you could throw in even a, even Europe wouldn't do this to workers. Isn't this the best country in the world? You're a disgrace to this country. Uh, get a, get a roll of friendly. Um, somebody published it. Holy shit. Somebody published it. Uh, Exel. Yeah, I already broke that story. I was one of the first recipients of those texts. I've had them for hours. Yep, I've had them before that post went up. <laughs> I 
The person who tanked anti-work uh, is a sexual abuser. Public. <laughs> well, has you two holes. Um, hey, Samurai. Um, yeah, the, the person who tanked the anti-work interview for Fox News is a sexual abuser. No, I have, uh, I just have sources everywhere and somebody sent it to me securely. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I had it earlier today. Um, and so like, yeah, Cassidy can testify. Cassidy was, we consulted earlier today. Um, nice the resolution. Um, yeah. I didn't think it should probably be done in that manner, but. Uh, Crimson, I played around with it earlier today and I didn't like it. I didn't like the bonk. No, no public. Uh, 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 no, N no. This person, I think it's a they. It may be a her. I don't know public. Trans. NB. Not sure. Not sure. Um, but yeah. Um, sexually assaulted their former partner who already had PTSD from um, previous assaults. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They are public. They are. Uh, like, the labor movement got set back years today. Yesterday, technically, but today. 100%. All because of one dumb fuck. Who, by the way, is still defending the interview. Or at last check was defending the interview. So. They identify as a rat. Yeah. Saying they did a good job, even though it was an absolute shit show. They're, they identify as getting paid off to be incompetent. Uh, yeah, Marcus. Yeah. One dumb fuck. One bedroom dwelling fucking unwashed dumb fuck who took a Fox News primetime interview. Absolute shit show. Absolute fucking shit show. But this is what old timers cat. What number is this? Is this like three or four for me that I've beat the rest to the punch? This is not the first time, by the way, I've done this. I've broken stories. It's number three. Yeah, I've I've broken a few big stories before and I don't get credit for it because nobody pays attention to Kai. It's amazing. I'm basically the dude in the corner that is literally like just like somebody will walk into the fucking bank and be like he's gonna rob the bank. What? Yeah, he's gonna be the he's gonna rob the bank. You see he's got a gun right there. You can see. It's about to happen. Watch. And he robs the bank. Right? And then everybody fucking starts running around like, did you hear about the guy who robbed the bank? And then there's like four people who fucking pay attention to Kai like, yeah, we've known for a minute. Like, weren't you paying attention to Kai? He fucking told you that the dude was going to rob the bank. Like, he called it. Yeah, this is the third time I've broken like a nationwide story. 
nobody fucking pays attention. It's good. It's good. Hold on, give me one second. Yes, non-binary. I I am. Give me give me one sec. Oh yeah, Crystal. The entire the entirety of the anti-work movement has been um, ca captured and co-opted by neoliberals at this point, and all they want is like basic worker reforms. Give us a couple of paternity days and um, like some like an increased pay rate and maybe a couple hours off, and we'll call it square. The entirety of the movement has been ca uh, been co-opted and captured by neolibs. Mm -hmm. up donner um are you using uh bobby what what connection method are you are you using winbox use win use winbox thank you donner use winbox uh bobby if you're not already using winbox it'll make your setup a lot easier um I don't love you. I love you as a, as a fellow human being, I suppose. So in that capacity, Donger, I love you too. Um, take what you can get. Fair enough. Um, I don't get a ban invasion. The account, uh, fucking cupcake. The ban, uh, the account's two years old, and I don't get a ban evasion warning, so I don't think so. Uh, it's catching a Twitch ban, like a site wide ban. Um, glazy, like draw or do photo edits. I use, um, on my, on my tablet. Uh, I use Procreate and Vectinator for drawing. Um, yeah, so I use Procreate and Vectinator uh, for drawing on my tablet. Um, but 
like I don't draw on my fucking computer. Like that's not a thing I do. I do have I use Affinity by uh, by Serif Software. Um. Yes, microwave, hundred percent. We we covered it at the top of the show. Um, and yes, it is. It's bad. Um, it's bad. But yeah, I use uh, I use Affinity uh, software. So. So a person living under a rock, a uh, person that has trouble with consent goes on primetime Fox and makes a fool of themselves. It's not himself a lot. It's like non-binary trans. We're not sure. It's either her or they, them, not a hundred percent. So we're just going with they, them to be respectful. Um, make a fool of themselves and anti-work or did I miss a part? No, no, a lot of this pretty much it. Um, so. Dogger. Uh, non-binary, I sent him over and a couple of fucking sentences to Dylan. Whether Dylan checks. That's, that's up to them. Um. Uh, any, um, any of you motherfuckers play Project Zomboid? We got anybody in the community that plays Zomboid? Let me know. I'd like to get a multiplayer game of that going, but holy shit, do I suck. Like, I'm just starting out. I suck. Uh, I, dude, public, that game is hard. The game is hard. The game is fucking ridiculous. Um... Yeah, like it, dude. I, I, the first, like after death number three, I was like, you know what, division of labor. If there were people, like this is this is communal fucking, like this is uh, mutualist um, anarchism right at work, right? Like this game is hard. Let's fucking get like five, ten, twelve fucking people in here, right? And division of labor, this bitch, and that way, this is a more survivable scenario. Um, yeah. Dude, the game is fucking hard. I, 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 I respect that the game starts you off by telling you you're going to die. You're going to die. This is the story of your death. Right up front. This is how you die. Um, It is not a game that you survive. It is a game that you die in. Um, and so, yeah. It is... Dude, it's rough. But I have never seen... Um, I've never seen a game with mechanics that in depth before. The the mechanics are so in depth for Zomboid, it's crazy. I I I've never it's just it's absurd. Like the the level of detail the game goes into. It's crazy. So Yeah, Bobby, I figured Winbox would help you. Oh, Mosh, I already have, like, dude, seven days to die. I fucking, dude, I kicked the shit out of that game. Um, we created an, we called, uh, we created Anarcho Haven in it. Like, it literally is an anarchist haven with all of our, with, dude, we basically set up an oil refinery in that fucking game. We have, like, dude, I kicked the shit out of seven days to die. Um, that wasn't difficult. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, um, let's see. <laughs> Jesus Christ, cupcake. <laughs> um, hey, cat, I get it. I get it. Um, no, I haven't played RimWorld, and it's not really m my game. I I've seen it played plenty of times. It's not my thing. It's it's in depth. I get. Don't get me wrong. I'm not fucking slighting it. Um, but. The level of detail in Zomboid is crazy. I, I've never even... Like, it's just absurd. The, like, granular detail that the game goes down into. All the way to, like, yeah, do you have the, the mechanical knowledge and the skills and experience 
to properly work on a car. And also your car has like a hood. It has suspension. It has tires. It has a componentized engine. It has windows. It has paint. It has like all of that stuff is various skill sets, like all of these sorts of things. Various ways to fix a fucking you use a bat. Well, you know, it's like the bat broke. Well, how do I fix it? Well, there's multitudes of ways to fix a bat. Do you have wood glue? Do you have tape? Do you have like, you know, there's fucking, hey, I want to make some stir. I want to make some stir fry. Well, go find a fucking frying pan or a wok. Do you have a working like campfire or working stove? Do you have oil? Do you have soy sauce? Do you have rice? Do you have the various ingredients that go into the stir fry? Do you have the basic knowledge required to prepare this stir fry? Oh, you're infectious. You got, you got a scrape because you tripped while you were running and you're slightly, your character is slightly clumsy. And now you have a scrape on your knee. Were you clean? When was the last time you washed your various extremities? This contributes to the infection rate on your body. Are your clothes clean, by the way? Because that can contribute to the infection rate on your body. Like, it, it is... It is absolutely absurd, the level of granular detail in Project Zomboid. It, it, it's, it is insane. Hey, you smash out a window and you can climb through it. Oh, you didn't clean out the glass remnants in the window frame when you were climbing, at, uh, climbing through, so you got cut. You don't. Fucking, I love the question Dylan just asked me behind the scenes. How do I know these are real? I'm like, you don't. There's no individual way to provide proof outside of being in the original poster's friend group on Facebook and having access to these posts before they were taken down. Why is Dylan asking stupid questions? I thought Dylan was smarter than this. Like, how do you verify the veracity of a Facebook post screenshot? Yes. Cat, yes. <laughs> They're private Facebook posts. They wouldn't have been they wouldn't have been archived by way back. Um, I recommended a, use something akin to photo forensics 
to uh, do a digital analysis of whether they've been run through Photoshop or not to analyze them for alterations. But I don't think Dylan is technically competent enough to use photo forensics to analyze an image. No, whether I don't think I'll end up getting credited, I don't think Dylan will fucking say shit. Um, let's see. Hold on. This is number two. Watch this. I'm going to do fucking Dylan's leg work for him. Number six, I, of course, I don't think Dylan is competent enough to do an ELA level analysis. Uh, in fact, red, it is on a mobile, it's a mobile screenshot. So it isn't a, a PC uh, uh, screenshot. It's an Android screenshot in which uh, it is the native Facebook client. I just did all of Dylan Burns' work for him by giving him a fucking description of what e uh, ELA uh, forensic analysis looks like, uh, what it is, and how to do it, and then linked to all of the screenshots on a site that will do an ELA level analysis so he can then see it for himself. So I've, I've just done Dylan Burns' own fucking backstopping work for him. Which I'm not surprised. Um... What's up, man? Thank you for the raid. Thank you for the host. Send him a fucking bill. I know, right, Cassidy? Drama. Um, how was your, how was your, um, how was your stream? What'd you get up to? What'd you guys do? Uh, th uh, antithesis. Thank you for the follow. Serbian Kayark when? <laughs> Serbia number one. Uh... Bobby, okay, so I was connected via Winbox and all of a sudden I cannot see the router at all. Jesus Christ, Bobby. We'll see, we'll see what we can get what we can get done for you. You might need to reset the router. Um 99 antithesis, thank you. Thank you for the follow.
Wednesday nights are chill. We watch some videos about ghost forests in the Amazon, then ridiculously narrated marbles on stream. How's it going in here? Oh, uh, fucking, we broke a story um, that the rest of the fucking community is going to be talking about for a little bit, probably, involving some fucking anti-work Fox News shit um, that, of course, Kai won't get credit for. Um, I never do when I break these stories. Um, it's just part of being an anarchist. Um, and, uh, we fucking, we've been talking about some stuff. Um, also, uh, I've got a call out for anybody who plays Project Zomboid. I want to get a multiplayer game of Project Zomboid going. Um, so there's that. But yeah, we've just been doing some headlines and some shit like that and... Yeah. Oh, uh, either way, I'm just dealing with some stuff behind the scenes right now. Fucking DMs with fucking so-called larger streamers who are not good at doing their own backstopping and their own fucking research. Cassidy, does it annoy you too when you see this kind of like f fucking um, amateur hour shit? Glazy, I'll fucking stand by it. Dude, Dylan should be able to fucking, like, asking questions like, how do I know if these screenshots are real, right? Like, you should you should understand. Like, if you're going to be in this game, fucking <laughs> Bobby, um, yeah, you should be able to do that sort of thing. You should understand that there's, like, Photoshop forensic analysis and there's error level analysis that you can run images through. Like, it shouldn't be up to your source. It should be you. If you're the recipient of a uh, of a, a leak, it's up to you to verify the veracity. That's that's how it works, right? Because you're gonna have to cross check. You can't rely upon fucking like when a source comes to you, it's not up to the source to prove the veracity of the the data that they give you. It's up to you to cross-reference whether the what their statement as per the veracity of it, whether it holds water or not. Uh, public, I will happily walk you through it sometime if you want a lesson in ELA analysis. It's no big deal. It's easy to do. It's easy to do, public. Um, yeah, I can I can totally walk you through it, public. I, I'll I'll show you the I'll show you the site that can, can do the the analysis on it. Um, and show you how to interpret the results and that sort of thing. No big deal. It, it would take, it'd probably take less than 20 minutes public. Seriously, it's simple. That's why it's obnoxious when people can't do it. You're like, how do you not like, you know, if you're gonna be in this game, right? If you're gonna, if you're gonna do the whole like pseudo journalism thing, you should be capable of doing this. You should be aware of these techniques. So let me know public, just ask anytime. I'll help you out, you know I will. Um, fucking Dylan literally helped accuse Kai, uh, Prime K's of sexual harassment. Dude needs to learn this sort of shit. Um, fucking Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm guessing I'm <laughs> larger means better as this is a meritocracy. Yeah, well, uh, um, I'm guessing Prime K's wasn't sexually harassing people based on the context and the tonality of what you're discussing. Um, as much problem as I have with Prime K's just entire format and the fact that he charges to like kick people off and bring people on and that sort of thing, uh, you know, um, uh, un unfounded, uh, non evidentiary uh, charges of sexual harassment can be damning to say the very least. Um, and to make them without any empirical um, backing is um, <clears throat> problematic, shall we say? Oh, mildly related to image forensics, forgive my ADHD brain for the jump of logic. Oh, AI generated profile image on somebody fucking talking shit about unions and defending Amazon. Oh, fucking A, dude, for twos. That's not a fucking logic jump. That's that's on point. That's like, 
relevant to the conversation at hand. Hold on. What bothers me most about unions is there's no ability to opt out of dudes. It's a single mother with two boys. I'm barely scraping by as it is. And now unions want to come to Amazon and make, make, um, make pay them, make them pay a piece of my salary. No, thanks. Nice AI generated profile image, Darla. Common flow with AI images, glasses mixed from two styles, literally produced the fucking, like the, the heart, the evidence on that blurry mess of hair, hair, brows suggest poor white space cropping or image editing. Uh, I don't know what kind of fill that is. It's not concatenated. I don't know what kind of fill that is. If you can fill in that fucking gap there. Out of place piercing artifact, probably AI generated. Fucking A. <laughs> that's, that's a hard call out. That's a fucking hard call out. I use a different one. Ah, uh, Caleb. Yeah, that one's not very responsive. Jesus Christ. All right. Um, let's see. Let's do an ELA on that. Passes. That's fine. Let's do the component analysis. Yeah, that's fine. Let's do an equal histogram equalization. No, auto contrast. There we go. Clone detection? Nope. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I'm going to hang on to this for sure, Caleb. It's not my choice of uh, service, though, for that sort of thing. Um, but respect that you've got one that you've got a preference respect um I like somebody who brings their own tools to the table That's, that's, hey, Caleb, like I said, I like anybody who brings their own tools to the job site. All right. It's, it's fine. There's tools at the job site, but you know, when you rock up with your own tools, it shows that you, you understand the process at hand, that you're, you're, you've got some experience and you've got preferences unto yourself. I, I respect that deeply. Um, FedEx is the inferior company to UPS because UPS is unionized. They get paid better. They get better breaks. Um, and FedEx is always almost universally regarded as an inferior working experience to UPS. Uh, and it is largely put up to the fact that UPS is uh, unionized and FedEx is not. And that's not just me talking. That's like me talking to various fucking people who have worked at it over the years. Um, oh, all right. Public said FedEx was atrocious to work for. I was literally just fixing that, Caleb. Good on you. Uh, so, I wouldn't trust him with packages if I'm honest. Dude, public, I've fucking, dude, I've had medication literally, like, expensive. Four digit expensive medication, public, just poof by FedEx. Just lost. Yeah. Yeah. FedEx is, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Don't trust him with fucking life-saving drugs. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I would not put if you're if you're reliant on that medication, don't put it in FedEx's hands. Oh. Uh.
My boss walked over boxes to rush them through. Everything they told, uh, everything they told us, could be cast aside for productivity. Oh God! Free market, baby. Yes, exactly. For two, exactly. I'm still fucking dude for two. The the pharmacy thing and the you walking us, uh, walking us through, uh, you doing the the map walkthrough of your area. Still fucks with my head as an American. Still fucks with my head as an American. Ah. Uh, um. Here. Let's do uh Yeah, let's do this. Here's an ELA. This is what, this isn't my choice of service, so you know. Um, my preferred service, here, let me, let me pull one of mine. Um, that's number four, right? Yeah, it's number four. Um, all right, so, actually let's do this this way. All right, so here's the original image. Okay. This isn't a, a a very damning. This isn't one of the the damning images, and this is an ELA analysis of it. Okay, you notice something going on here. You notice how there's areas highlighted and encircled, and you notice what corresponds to that is the actual edit that occurred. Right, like you can literally see these lines, these colored lines where these Photoshop edits had occurred. This is this is just step one. This is the most basic ELA analysis. So it tells you this part has been edited. 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 Has been edited. You can see where there has been changes to the images through an ELA analysis. So if somebody took an image and altered it via Photoshop, you could see via ELA whether there was an alteration there. Now, given that the originating or uh, the origin of the screenshot is in fact a um, on uh, on phone Facebook native Facebook app post, so you can sort of rule out the F12 source edit. Um, for the most part, given that it's Android, there could be interference on the back end that's a long ways to go but it's entirely possible um but like step one of data checking on that it clears right it passes the sniff test um sort of situation because the, the damning ones don't have edits on them the damning ones are literally just the screenshot unedited um and so it is clear that there are no changes to the image whatsoever on those um, and that's sort of what we're dealing with behind the scenes. Oh, fucking idiots. I swear to God. Um, well, according to, according to Hans Hermann Hoppe, Caleb, Keynes, uh, Keynes was a homosexual. And that's why Keynesian economic standards are uh, led into neoliberal degeneracy. And caps, my man. And caps. They are the worst kind of people. Nice, Bobby. See, you got there. Um. Dude, Fertus. Hoppa made it. Hoppa made that argument. Yeah. That, that. Fucking, he suspected that Keynes was a closeted homosexual, and given the low time preference by homosexuals, this is this is his argument that homosexuals have a, uh, an inherent low time preference. Therefore, economically speaking, they're poor planners, and they uh, le it leads to a variety of hedonistic lifestyles, 
and Keynes's closeted homosexuality influenced his economic decision making and policies, therefore creating a situation which could lead to a further spread of degeneracy throughout society. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's it's. <laughs> Uh, by the way, I, um, it's not even, it'll be on cooldown. I guarantee it's on cooldown. Um, I don't even think that's a clear, a correct understanding of low time preference. I really don't like I'd love to sit Swede down and get like the economics class on that one. I don't think Hoppe used low time preference correctly when he stated that he said it in a um, one of his economics classes. He got fucking he got a letter of um, of instruction by UNLV over this statement. Um it's it's an economic term. It has to do with whether you accept um, um, benefits now. Uh, you, you want you want payoff now versus waiting for later, or versus you you're fine with uh, not having payoff now and waiting for a payoff later. It's it's basically that sort of thing. Um, he's functionally. Holy shit, he's fucking dumb. He's functionally dumb. <laughs> Admittedly, I had not interacted with Dylan very much, but I didn't know... I didn't know it was this dense. Wow. Like. Dude, why are you asking? If you're watching right now, Dylan, why are you asking me where the images originated? One, I can't give you my source. That's not something I can do. I'm not allowed to give you my source. And two, they originated from a Facebook post from Doreen. That that image is clearly that information is clearly contained with the images. Like, what is with that question? I don't mean to call you out hard, man, but that is a rough question. Either you should know the answer to that question or you should know the answer to that question. Like, I can't give you my source. I anonymized my source intentionally. I provided them two-way secure encrypted anonymous communication so they could submit those to me without fear of retribution. That's source number... That's dealing with whistleblower sources 101 especially in an electronic or a digital age, right? Like, protect your fucking sources. I instructed them on how to use, like there's literally instructions on the, the submission system that I utilize of how to use a VPN or Tor on top of it to further anonymize yourself. And two, if it's, if it's, that's not the question. If the question is like, where did they originate from? They originated from a Facebook post by Doreen. That information is clearly contained within. I, I I don't I don't know what to tell you, my man. That's fucking dude, this is yeah, like Cassie, this is like intro to journalism territory. I don't I don't Yeah. I don't know what to say about that. I'm a little put back I'm a little put like I'm a little staggered.
It's a little worrisome that that question was put to me. <laughs> anyway, um, we should do some more Bob Black. We should do some more Bob Black. In, in light of the anti-work debacle, We, we should read some more Bob Black. See which one of these we want to do. All right, cool. Ah, uh, nice, Bobby. Nice. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's do a put a uh, primitive affluent, a postscript assailant. Um, I don't even know if I should respond. Should I respond? Should I DM back? I've just typed. Okay, so this is what I typed out. Let me know. This is what Dylan asked. Where did they originate? I said, are, are you asking me for a source? Because you know I can't give you that, right? That's completely unethical and technically impossible due to the shielding they were submitted to me through. Otherwise, if you're asking me where as in what site or what location on that site, that contextually is contained within the images. That's what I've typed out. Should I respond is my question to some of you. It feels like... I, All right, sent. Uh, right, I have no interaction with this person. And so far, I'm not impressed. Non-binary, stop. 
Stop. Non-binary. I'm telling you now, stop. Please and thank you. Stop interacting with this at all. I, I'm not looking to be associated with somebody who is this amateur hour. This is this is sad. Like, yeah. All right. Then he should probably stay in his fucking lane. I don't know. It's fucking... Cellar door, thanks for the follow. I just popped up on the side. Didn't pop up on the screen for some reason. Yeah, just don't... Don't. I'm, I'm, I'm not looking to get involved with this. This is, this is clearly... What's up, Cellar? How you doing? Welcome back. Shit libs. What are you going to do with them? That's about my only fucking comment at this point. Shit libs. There's a fuck. They're just shit libs. I, I'm sorry. Like, what are you, what are you going to fucking do? Right? They don't understand any of these concepts. They've never fucking learned about them. And apparently all that circles around Dylan is shit libs. So... Uh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. All right, let's do, let's read some, um, facts, dude, only facts, for sure. This is why you break stories and they don't, people don't reach out to the, uh, to the senseless rookies. Um, all right, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm fucking, dude, I'm just going to read some Bob Black. Let's, let's, let's get into it in, in, in the face of fucking anti-work being absolutely shot in the fucking face by some dummy and then shit libs like Dylan Burns, apparently fucking just absolutely like encouraging in the reveling, encouraging the reveling of, uh, of the like, you know, molding of anti-work users, uh, appropriately their appropriate emotional reaction to what they see as the undermining of their movement. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's, um, let's read some more Bob Black, I guess. Um, but yeah, like this has left a pretty bad taste in my mouth as far as Dylan Burns as a individual goes. Um, I had no idea Dylan was like fucking, a child, by the way. I had no idea that Dylan was like 20, 22. Um, oh, Seller, I already broke the fucking... Dude, I broke the shit out of stuff that people... You're going to see people talking about Seller, and I fucking... Of course I got there first. Um, but, like, yeah. Fucking... Yeah, I had no idea. I had, I had no idea. I, I, I didn't know. Um, so let's read some Bob Black. <clears throat> I should record this. <clears throat> we'll see. How long is this? Hang on. Let's see if I can make through this. 54, 33, that's 21 pages. He's trying to play damage control for the mod. God, he's... Yeah, Kaiser, apparently you are. And far more worldly. And far more trustworthy.
apparently. Um, <clears throat> Crimson, yeah, like somebody fucking, dude, fucking, I rely on you people to tell me whether these people are worth talking to or not. Um, all right, <clears throat> let's try and get through this. We'll see if we can do this in a single run. I hope I can. Oh, it's going to be a fucking slog. All right. Hang on. There. All right, let's do some more Bob Black. Primitive Affluence, a postscript to Solon's. The Original Affluent Society by Marshall Solons is an essay of wide-ranging erudition whose persuasive power largely derives from two extended examples. The Australian Aborigines and the Kung Bushmen. The Australian instance omitted here is developed from a variety of 19th and 20th century written sources. The data on the Bushmen, or the San, as they call themselves, were the result of fieldwork in the early 1960s by Richard Borche Lee, an anthropologist. Lee has subsequently published a full monograph on work in, the, in a Kung uh, San bond, uh, bond in which he augments, recalculates, and further explains the statistics relied on by Salins. As finally marshaled, the evidence supports the affluence thesis more strongly than ever and includes a couple of surprises. Why should we plant, asked Lee's informant, Dashi, when there are so many Mungongos in the world? Why indeed? Originally, Lee studied the San equivalent of what is conventionally accounted work in industrial society, hunting and gathering in their case, wage labor in ours. This was the comparison Salon cited. In terms of our standard eight-hour workday, a San adult works between 2.2 and 2.4 hours a day, well below the provisional four-hour figure Salon's references. Not that the San work is uh, not that the San work is seven or even a five-day week at these ludicrously, uh, ludicrously low levels of labor, for they spend quote less than half their days in subsistence and enjoy more leisure time than the members of many agricultural and industrial societies. For many, Lee might have said, might have better said any. More often than not, a Kung San is visiting friends and kin at their other camps or receiving them in their own. Upon returning to the field, Lee broadened his definition of work to encompass all those activities that contribute to the direct appropriation of food, water, or materials for the, from the environment, adding to subsistence activity tool making, and fixing and housework, mainly food preparation. These activities didn't increase the San workload as much as their equivalents in our sort of society increase ours. Relatively, we fall even further behind then. Per diem, the manufacturer and maintenance of tools takes 64 minutes of men, 45 minutes for women. Housework for the San means mostly cracking nuts plus cooking, most adults of both sexes and older children crack their own mongongo uh, nuts. And the only activity where women do, uh, women do more work than men, 2.2 hours a day for men and 3.2 hours for women. But nor are these figures fudged by unreported child labor. Until about age 15, San children do virtually no work. And if they're female, they continue to do little work until marriage, which may be some years later, actually. Our adolescents fare worse at McDonald's. Not to forget that women and children comprise the workforce for the brutal beginnings of industrialization in Britain and America. It's often asserted that in most societies, women work more than men, and this is probably in general true. In a perhaps not unrelated development, women in all known societies wield less political power than men. In fact, usually none whatsoever. A thoughtfully strategic feminism should therefore uh, eventuate in anarchism, not in fantasies of matriarchal table turning and in the abolition of work, not in caterwauling for equal pay for equal work. The only mathematically certain way to equalize gender-wise government and work is to get rid of both of them. 
In San society, however, men work more than women. Men do one-third more subsistence work than women, although they provide only 40% of caloric intake. When the full tally of work, as Lee expansively defines it, is taken, the average work week is 44.5 hours for men and 40.1 hours for women. Lee's original figures relied on by Salins were startling enough, but the later data enhanced their value by allowing comparisons of housework as well as subsistence work. Our world of work has a dirty secret. Wage work rests on the indispensable prop of unpaid shadow work. The arduous toil of housewives. Cleaning, cooking, shopping, childcare. It's all so much uncompensated drudgery, literally unaccounted for in statistics on work. With us, as much as with the San, such work is usually women's work. To a much greater extent among us, though. How many husbands perform even two hours of housework a day? How many wives, like their San counterpart, less than three? Nor does San society exhibit any sight so sorry as the majority of married women working for wages or salaries in addition to the housework they always did, and at levels of pay which still reflect sexual inequality. Lee's later figures strengthen the affluence the thesis in other ways. For instance, caloric intake, previously underestimated, is up to a more than adequate level. The surplus is stored as body fat against occasional shortages, fed to the dogs or consumed to sustain people's efforts at all-night trance-healing dances occurring one to four times a month. And despite the staggering variety of plant and animal sources in their diet, the San do not eat many items which other people find edible. Their work yields them so many consumer goods that the San as a society can and do exercise consumer choice. To assign such societies to the category subsistence economy is not only a foolish uh, phraseology, what economy is not a subsistence economy? As Pierre Clastres argues, it passes an adverse value judgment in the guise of a statement of fact. The implication is that these societies have failed to be other than what they are. As if they were unthinkable, anybody might prefer a leisurely life bereft of bosses, priests, princes, and paupers. The San have a choice. In the 1960s and 1970s, amidst a worsening political situation in Botswana and neighboring Namibia, Many San gave up foraging for uh, employment by the Bantu cattle, uh, cattle ranchers or South African farmers. All along, they were able but not willing to work for wages. As even Ilyich uh, observes, economists understand about work about as much as alchemists about gold. In positing as twin fatalities infinite wants and finite scarce resources, they erect a dismal science on axioms every sensible person rejects out of hand. By their life ways, the hunter-gatherers give the lie to the Hobbesian hoax. Resources are bountiful, and the San consume them with gusto, but since they're rational hedonists, non-aesthetic madmen, the San find satisfactory, a satisfaction in, uh, in satiety. They have worked enough if there is plenty for everybody. So scandalous are the foragers for the economists and their addicts that they call forth periaxums of pulpit-thumping prejudice, notably by libertarian economist Murray Rothbard. And in a hostile review of my book espousing the abolition of work, David Ramsey Steele, Liberty as it styles itself, suppressed 90% of my rejoinder to Steele. Let me retaliate by quoting him only in quoting myself. Steel, with unintended humor, explains why hunter-gatherers loaf most of the time. Quote, if you have one animal carcass to keep you going for the next week or two, it's a waste of effort to get another one. And what else is there to do but swap stories? The poor devils are too rich to work, cruelly denied the opportunity to accumulate capital. What is this else is there for the ben uh, benighted savages to do but create, converse, dance, sing, feast, and fuck? Terrible life. Behind Steele's braying ethnocentrism is a fear of wil uh, wilderness and wildness, a yearning fear for the call from the forest, a fear for freedom of itself. 
Foragers like the San and the uh, uh, Australians are not the only prosperous primitives with it, uh, with ample leisure. Gardeners who practice shifting slash and burn cultivation work a lot less than we moderns. In the Philippines, the horticultural Hanano annually devote 500 to 1,000 hours of the subsistence activity that sustains one adult. At the higher figure, that works out to less than two hours and 45 minutes a day. Gardening, augmented by hunting and gathering, was the mode of production amongst most of the indigenous, in, uh, indigenous population in eastern North America when the Europeans arrived. The clash of cultures has been regarded from many perspectives, but not as intent, uh, insistently as it should be as a collision between worlds of work. Far from living hand to mouth, the indigenous produced a surplus. Had they not, the settlers would have starved at Jamestown and at Plymouth. Far from exhausting themselves, scrounging for survival, the impression the indigenous left on the early English observers, like Captain John Smith, was that their life was a paradise of all but workless plenty. He thought the settlers might enjoy a three-day work week featuring the pretty sport of fishing. In 1643, the magistrates of Massachusetts Bay received the submission of two Rhode Island sachems, quote, giving them to understand upon what terms they must be received under us, as Governor John Winthrop put it. The indigenous were told not to do any unnecessary work on the Lord's Day within the gates of proper towns. Not to worry, replied the Sackhams. It was a small thing for us to rest on that day, for we have not much to do any day, and therefore we will forbear on that day. According to one of the Roanoke colonists, to feed one Virginian indigenous person enough corn for a year required annually 24 hours of work. Of course, the indigenous ate more than corn. New England indigenous populations enjoyed an abundant, varied diet for superb health, more nutritious and less monotonous than what became standard fare in, say, the back country of the South or in later industrial tenements. Whatever else early America was, according to recent scholarship, it was a world of work. Indigenous America was anything but, as the Roanoke colonist was not only the one to notice— no wonder that he and others apparently went native, abandoning the earliest English settlements, leaving only a message carved on a tree that they were, quote, gone to Croatan. These first defectors from civilized toil to barbarous ease were not to be the last. Throughout the colonial period, hundreds of Euro-American agriculturists joined the indigenous populations or captured in war refused to return when peace came. Women and children were inordinately likely to take to the indigenous lifestyle, readily casting off their restrictive roles in white society, but adult males also sought acceptance amongst the heathen. Without a doubt, work was a major motivation for the choices they made. At Jamestown, John Smith enforced a regimen of labor discipline so harsh as to approach concentration camp conditions. In 1613, some of the English were appointed to be hanged, some burned, some to be broken upon wheels, other to be staked, and some to be shot to death. Their crime? A historian accounts that all, quote, had run away to live with the Indians and had been recaptured, end quote. The anthropology of work does not suggest any reduction in the quantity or increase in the quality of work in societies of greater complexity. The trend or tendency is rather the other way. The hunt for Virginia, uh, Virginian indigenous men, as for their San counterparts, was more like sport than work. But their wives seemed to have worked more than San women, if less than their white counter, uh, uh, contemporaries. On the other hand, the gardeners work, perhaps even less than the sun, but some of the work, like weeding and clearing new fields, is more arduous. The watershed, however, is the onset of civilization with its government, cities, and class divisions. Peasants work more because they're compelled to, because they have rents, taxes, and tithes to pay. 
Later, the laboring class pays all that plus profits to, which are taken by employees whose interests lie in prolonging and intensifying work. There is, in the words of the Firesign Theater, harder work for everyone and more of it too. Consider how many weeks of subsistence work an Englishman had to do over the centuries. In, in 1495, 10. In 1564, 20. In 1684, 48. In 1726, 52. With progress, work worsens. So it was with the American worker. In the 18th century, there was a general trend for labor, slave, and free alike, formerly seasonal, to become continual. Technical progress, as usual, made matters worse. Seamen, for instance, were something of an avant-garde of wage labor. During the 18th century, the size of ships and their capacity for cargo greatly increased, and their work became heavier and also harder to do. Seamen responded by collective action, including strikes. They coined the word. They would strike the sails. Mutinies and the ultimate piracy, the seizure of the workplace. Pirates simplified the management hierarchy, elected their captains, replaced wages with cooperative ownership and risk sharing, and vastly reduced the hours of work since a pirate ship had a crew five times larger than the merchantmen they preyed upon. Aversion to work was a main motivation. For one pirate, quote, the love of drink and a lazy life were stronger motives with him than gold. An admiral who impressed some suspected pirates, uh, pirates into service on his man of war thought to rehabilitate them. To learn them working, which they turned rogues to avoid. The governor of the Bahamas said, quote, for work they mortally hate it. And another resident of those islands concurred, working does not agree with them. It goes without saying that the next turn of the wheel, industrialization, made for more and more monotonous work than workers as a class ever endured before. There were no volunteers in the industrial army. The earliest American factory operatives were not even in most cases formally free. They were women and children sent to work by their lawful superiors, their husbands and fathers. The factories of the North, like the plantations of the South, rested, so to speak, on servile labor. For a time, much later, the hours of work did decline as organized labor and assorted reformers made shorter hours a part of their agenda. The eight-hour day which we officially enjoy is the cause for which the Haymarket anarchists of 1886 paid with their lives. But the New Deal in legislating a 40-hour week scotched proposals by then-Senator Hugo Black, later a Supreme Court justice, for a 30-hour week, and the unions dropped shorter hours from their shopping lists. In recent years, workers have dropped unionization from their shopping list. Everything that goes around comes around. Not only have the hours of work not diminished for all the technological process, of the last half century, the years of our lives devoted to work have actually gone up. The reason is that many more people are living to retirement age, which means that the system is getting more years of work out of us. The average American male works eight more years than his counterpart in 1900. In the 18th century, a worker ended his days if he lived so long in the poorhouse. In the 20th, if he lived so long in the nursing home, lonely and tortured by medical technology. Progress! I've saved the worst for last. Women's work. Today's working women, most women now work outside the home as employees, are worse off working than they have ever been. They still do most of the household work they've done since industrialism. And additionally, they do wage work. Their entry in force into the workplace, they were working all along, but unpaid labor, insane to say, isn't counted as work. In the last 20 years has greatly increased their total toil and as a result, the total toil altogether, since nobody thinks men are working less. Even if sex discrimination were entirely eradicated, 
which is far from imminent, equalized women workers would still shoulder an unequal load of what Illich calls shadow work. The consumer's unpaid toil that adds to a commodity in incremental value that is necessary to make this commodity useful to the consuming unit itself. Civil rights laws do not, cannot, penetrate the household. The history of work, if it has any evolving logic, is a history of the increasing imposition of exhausting toil on women. Any feminism which is not implacably anti-work is fraudulent. The world of civilization, the world of history, is above all, objectively and subjectively, a world of work. The jury is on the verdict workers pass on what work means to them. Subjectively, it hurts, and they hate it. Objectively, it just gets worse in terms of the ways it might imaginably get better. Since the late 19th century, most work has been de-skilled, standardized, moronized, fragmented, isolated, policed and made secure against piratical expropriation. To take and hold even one workplace, the workers will have to expropriate them all, likely. Even hard work could be easier, and easier to take than the bossed work most of us do. In Liberia, the Kapali, for instance, uh, for instance, grow rice, which is work, strenuous work, by any definition. But these Neolithic farmers conduct their work in a way that the organizers of our work can't or won't even consider. Lini, joy, axiomatically accompanies any work that Capelli do, or they won't do any. Work is conducted in groups to the accompaniment of musicians whose rhythms place the strokes of their hoes and machetes. Intermittently, a woman throws down her hoe and dances to entertain her companions and relax muscles made sore by the rep uh, repetitive movements. At the end of the day, the workers drink palm wine and sing and dance together. If this is not Salem's original affluent society, it's still an improvement on an allegedly affluent one work-wise. The anthropologist adds that the government has compelled the Capelli to switch from dry rice farming to wet, irrigated rice farming, since it's more productive. They demure, but not out of any inherent conservatism. They accepted the advice of the same experts to raise coca as a crash crop. The point is that Patty rice cultivation will just be plain work without the vital leavening of gossip, singing, and dance. The traces of play, which have been all but leached out of most modernized work. As the 80s ended and the 90s commenced, working hours in America, where millions are without work, went up. The new two-income family has a lower standard of living than the one-income family of the 1950s. Housework has hardly been diminished by the 20th century technology. Time studies suggest 56 hours of house week a w uh, housework a week in uh, 1912, 60 in 1918, 61 for families in 1925. In 1931, college-educated housewives in a big city worked 48 hours a week, but by 1965, the average for all housewives was 54 hours, with college-educated women putting in 19 more minutes a day than those with grade school education. By 1977, wives without outside unemployment worked 50 hours a week. Those with jobs, 35 hours excluding wage work, which, at 75 hours, adds up to a working week that even sweatshops cannot match. Primitive productive life was neither nasty nor brutish, nor was it even necessarily short. Significant proportions of San men and women live past age 60. The population structure is closer to that of the United States than to a typical third world country. With us, heart disease is the leading cause of death and stress, a major risk factor, is closely related to job satisfaction. Our sources of stress hardly exist amongst hunter gatherers. Cancer, the second greatest killer, is of course a consequence of industrialization largely. Working conditions for hunters can be hazardous, yet civilized work does not even here exhibit a clear superiority especially when it is recalled that many of the 2.5 million American motoring fatalities to date involve one or more participants in wage work, police, cabbies, teamsters, truckers, etc., etc., or shadow work like commuting and shopping. Solins had already remarked upon the superior quality of working life enjoyed by the primitive producers to borrow a catchphrase from the pseudo-humanist experts in job redesign and job re re enrichment. In addition to shorter hours, flex time. 
And the more reliable safety net afforded by general food sharing, foragers' work is more satisfying than most modern work. We awaken to the alarm clock. They sleep a lot, night and day. We're sedentary in our buildings, in our polluted cities. They move about breathing the fresh air of the open country. We have bosses. They have companions. Our work typically implicates one, or at most a few, hyper-specialized skills, if any. Their combines handiwork, brain work, and a versatile variety of activities, exactly as the great utopians called for. Our commute is dead time and unpaid to boot. They can't even leave the campsite without reading the landscape in a potentially productive way. Our children are subject to compulsory school attendance laws. Their unsupervised offspring play at adult activities until almost imperceptibly they take their place doing them. They are the makers and masters of their simple yet effective toolkits. We work for our machines, and this will soon be no metaphor. According to an expert from the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, quote, in general, robots will work for men, but there may be exceptions in which some robots are higher in the hierarchy than some humans. The last world and the last word in equal opportunity employment. I see we've got a few of Dylan's people based on comments. We've got some libs. I, I, I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'm feeling, yeah, there's neoliberalism on the air. You can sort of, you can, you can sort of smelling it. You can sort of smell it. Um, you, you know when the neoliberals show up. Cupcake, cupcake doing the fucking back, uh, the backstopping. Um, uh, Caleb, uh, also, um, for your, uh, to draw your ire, if you want to add to the pile, libertarian is also another one. I mean, derived and born of the French libertas, right? That's, we've completely bastardized libertarian in this country. Um, What used to be basically synonymous with anarchist is now synonymous with fucking right-wing, socially and fiscally conservative uh, individuals. Uh, Austrian economists who are the antithesis of libertarianism in its classical sense. So, yeah, Caleb. Uh, also, the word progressive. Yeah, we're, we're kind of teetering on that one. There's still some correct usage. There's still some correct usage kicking around, Caleb. But, yeah, we're teetering on that one for sure. Oh, no, ours is better. Caleb, I, I will defend it. Ours ours is a better spelling, usually. Uh, the only thing that I will go to bat with you guys on is the herb-herb thing. Just drop the H, then. Like, the H is there. Say the goddamn H. Well, it's French. Well, you know, whatever. But, uh, no, I think that you guys have a lot of unnecessary letters. Um, we've simplified the spelling. Um, seller, Bob Black is an advocate for a realigning of the concept of or the elimination of the concept of work and a realigning of the job tasks or the necessary survival tasks for building civilization and maintaining civilization around the concept of play. He's also an asshole. Um, he's sort of a post-leftist anarchist in his own right, um, and he has a lot to say about a lot of stuff. He's definitely worth reading. Um, so, yeah. Um, if you want to, if you want to hear, um, Bob Black's, uh, abolition of work, um, then you, uh, go to the, uh, go to my YouTube channel, um, and you can, you can see, you can hear a reading of that. Um, I'll get you a link. Let me find it. Uh, oh, no, hang on. 
I've got it in my panel. It's just gonna be in my panel. All right. There you go. Um, there's, there's Bob Black's abolition of work, which is fundamental to understanding the concept of anti-work. Um, yeah, like it is, it is like literally foundational text for understanding the concept of the elimination of, of work in society. Um, yeah. So give it a watch. It's like 45 minutes. Um, uh, but yeah, um, he's, Bob Black is sort of an antagonistic element within anarchist theory, uh, modern anarchist theory. And like I said, he's an asshole, but that's kind of, you need one, right? Like occasionally you need someone to come along and say the thing. What's up, Jar? Um, you need somebody to say the thing. Right. And everybody's like tiptoeing around it to be polite in society. And Bob just kicks in the fucking door and is like, that's bullshit. And we all know it. Shut the fuck up. You need one. Occasionally. Um, yeah, tech support. I mean, you know. I'm more about a fucking tech support. It just depends. Like, there's room for like, there's room for the artistry of language, and then there's room for the functionality of language. Um, I feel both. I feel both. Um, and for those of you who haven't been around, there's the playlist for the, that's the anti-ANCAP playlist. That is 12 hours of Kai discussing right libertarian and so-called anarcho-capitalist theory and the dissecting thereof, the analysis of like Austrian economics and blah, 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 bunch of fucking shit. It's all born of a uh, uh, anarchist FAQ document of why ANCAPs are not anarchists. Um, I like that he'd be beefing with Murray Bookchin. Um, yeah, dude, he's the reason Murray went mask off at the end. Um, uh, fucking Bob was calling that for years. Bob's like, he's a fucking ML. He's not an anarchist. I don't give a shit what he says. And Bob would just poke at him and 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 poke at him. And eventually Murray went mask off. And towards the end of his life, before he kicked, everybody was like, oh shit, Murray's still a fucking ML. Um, so yeah, it was, it was fascinating to see that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Kaiser. Um, yeah, Jara. Yeah, few. Um, uh, try like, yeah, three and a half. Yeah, and as typical, uh, look, I'm not a fucking huge streamer, but I broke some shit that you will catch other streamers talking about. That's me who broke it. When when you see the screenshots of the mod and you get to hear about how the mod is a shit human being, that was me. That was me who did that. Um, fucking, you'll have fucking Dylan Burns out there and you'll have fucking probably Vosh. You'll have somebody, you'll have all those fuckers talking about it. Um... I was the one who broke that shit. So, you know, yeah. It's not the first time I've done that kind of shit either. Um, oh. So. Ah, uh, fuck non-compete. There, I said it. Yeah, fuck non-compete, I said it. Dude, he can take his venture capitalist fucking ML fucking ass elsewhere. He's not a fucking anarchist. I'm sorry. Anybody who advocates for fucking, like, uh, concentration camps for, for former capitalists, fucking rounding up fucking ca uh, capitalists and putting them in camps, homie, you're not a fucking anarchist. You can try and cu couch that language as much as you want. But, oh, and that shit show of a performance, he has no ethical framework. He has no ethical framework. Dude, that was dude, that was pathetic that Vosh got him to fall into that hole. Holy shit, homie. He has no fucking ethical framework. 
Dude's literally talking about scientific socialism right now with a black net on, uh, and ML on stream right now. Um, oh God, no, Wither. No, not my type. It's just like a camp for re-education. That's never been a problem term, right? Yeah, exactly, public. Public fucking gets it, dude. You start hearing talk, people talk about putting people in camps. Uh, check, please. Fucking check, please. Homie's not an anarchist. Homie's not an anarchist. I'm sorry. You're not... I'm, there's no way to fucking couch rounding up people that you find problematic for your society. Not people that are actively fucking shooting and raping motherfuckers. Just people who have ideological differences. Not even if they are active capitalists, but people with capitalist leanings or beliefs or ideologies. Put them in the re-education camp. Oh, fuck that. That's fucking... Hoo-wee. Fucking dude, that's mm, that ain't shit anarchists do. Sorry, fuck that shit. He can take his ML ass back to fucking Vietnam, where he does like his fucking like white boy tourism into the brown brown people's country, and fucking dude, no, no, he's an ML. Uh, Glazy, I'm not. Uh, now, keep in mind, Glazy, the, the flip side of that is if you can't walk in and catch somebody like diddling your daughter and you handle business, yeah, I'm not going to blink twice. No, no, tech support. It's in one of his fucking Anarchism 101 videos. It's literally in a guide to fucking anarchism that non-compete released like a couple of years ago. He straight up taught fucking... I was... Cat has told me about this video for ages. Last year, I'm fucking, I was like, you know what? I'll finally give non-compete a chance. I'm walking around the neighborhood doing laps and I fucking get to that part and I just call up Cat. I'm like, holy shit. He's fucking talking about the camps. Cat's like, yeah, I fucking told you. He's straight up fucking, yeah, in a fucking intro guide to anarchism, like a multi-part series to like, what is anarchism? He talks about re-education camps. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. It was like, Jesus. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't fucking believe it. I. I, I, you know, yeah. I mean. Cat, I mean, I fucking, I'm not gonna put, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna render that claim. I'm not gonna fucking put that uh, that allegation out there. But I mean, white dude in Vietnam, I'd have questions. Wither, because we're decentralized and we have no authoritarian centralized structure, so anybody can identify as an anarchist generally without being challenged by the milieu. Anybody can align. It's very easy to infiltrate and, uh, and go with, uh, go with like, bad opsecs. Yeah. Libertarian guy with an Asian wife. Just saying. I mean, I met a few of them in my day. And a former venture capitalist. Know that, right? He's a former venture capitalist. You know that, right? Yeah. Like the most heinous of capitalists. Uh, it is That is actually uh, not true, Caleb. You need to look into uh, open source intelligence. OSINT. Um, it's a fascinating process. Um, study it. Open source intelligence is completely doable. It's just we don't have a lot of people with experience in open source intelligence in the anarchist milieu. But um, in this community, we have mechanisms. So, yeah. Oh, I wouldn't do the fucking interview. It's... Um, Yeah, you're welcome, Caleb.
<laughs> my wife. Ah, uh, God. Yeah. Yeah, fuck that dude. Yeah, I, I, I have no... It's just part of the propaganda, a lot of. Eh. Uh, dig, that's because that is as that is leftist tradition, right? Um that's 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 where the ideological differences come from, right? Conservatism is based on let's just keep it the same. The devil we know is better than the devil we don't. Conservatism is fundamentally anti-progress it's about the maintenance of the status quo leftism is usually some like born of the enlightenment period or the renaissance it's about humanistic uh, tendencies or ideologies it's about progressive ideologies it's about pushing and changing and molding and shaping and that's where you have ideological differences and philosophical differences arise out of and so the history of leftism is essentially the history of infighting within political movements it is it is there is no such thing as leftist unity. It doesn't exist. It's it's a meme. It's a joke. It, it's never existed. It's not a thing. So, yeah. What do we got? Vosh, Vosh gonna copyright tag me if I, I play this. No, it's apparently some guy named Jazz Dog. It's time. Today we learn. After all that, we finally learn. The finale. The final version. I'm not confused. Nazis had a point. I can't believe they said this. He said this. That's so, so good. Oh, non-compete, everyone. I mean, featuring Vosh, of course, but that's non-compete. 
That's fucking Mr. Maybe the Nazis had a point himself. Uh, Cassiopeia, maybe the left can be unified and believe this is a banger. No, because it features Vosh. And the fucking, there's like an entire contingent of the left that thinks Vosh is like the Antichrist. So, no. No, that's definitely not going to happen, Cassiopeia. Oh, what's up, Cassiopeia? Um... That uh, there's straight up, uh, there's lefties that straight up think Fosh is fash. I mean, I've been accused of being a secret fascist, right? Can we talk about how Kai? Can we? It's about me, goddammit. it! The camera's on me. My ego needs servicing. I've got conspiracy theories to circulated about me. Fucking, there's people that think I'm a secret fascist too. <laughs> <laughs> I seen the evidence, Kai. Yeah, hold on. Let's, let's try and get the evidence. Hang on. I'll get you the evidence. We got evidence. There's fucking evidence that that, that I'm a secret fascist. Um. I mean, look at this shit, right? Look at this shit. I'm all over this fucking. This this is. I'm all over this fucking picture, right? Clearly, clearly, fucking public. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is, uh, I mean, how much more evidence do you need than this? I mean, for the love of God, uh, let's see. Fucking, I mean, look at this shit. I mean, photographic evidence, photographic evidence. I am clearly, clearly part of the problem. I, I mean, what, 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 what? Holy shit, who was there? I didn't even notice. Somebody got the fucking photo. I mean, damn. Fucking, I need to work on my OPSEC. I mean, and if you need any more evidence, I mean, any more evidence, look at this photographic evidence. I was in the lead tank. I was in the lead tank. <laughs> I offer critical support and uphold Kaya's thoughts. <laughs> uh, dude, puddle, because fucking leftists are insane half the time. Dude, it attracts absolute batshit insane people. Um, yeah, this is this is why you should study post-leftism. Told you, Caleb. Welcome to the community, Caleb. Kai's got a lot of decent information to be passed around. I've been around the block a bunch of times. Um, <laughs> Wordy. Hey there, Wordy. Bold of you to assume Kai isn't a manifestation of the queer hive mind. Um, oh, thank you, Caleb. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like that that's dude, do they fucking do they, we eat our own and we're bad shit insane. Just study post leftism. Kai ass thought. <laughs> uh Yeah, that's this this is this is post left uh, post leftist analysis by anarchists. For those of you who are new who don't know about post leftism and post anarchism, I'm going to do a quick speed run here. This is fucking this is compressed. Post leftism uh, post leftism is an anarchistic analysis of the uh, leftist space. Basically, anarchism belongs in the leftist space, but we have a whole lot of complaints and criticisms uh, about the tendencies of leftist ideologies and leftist movements and praxis. 
Utilizing the anarchistic lens of analysis, we step back from the leftist space and say, what are you doing wrong? What can be improved utilizing anarchistic tools and techniques? And a lot of our criticisms have to do with these uh, regimented, structuralized, professionalized, uh, and substitutionalized uh, uh, entities or uh, uh, events that occur within leftist spaces. I know I just skated over a whole bunch of fucking words there, but the long and short of it is, is that Leftist spaces love their hierarchies. They love to lock you into a hierarchy. They love uh, they love to create a professionalism. Uh, professionalism. They were able to create that professional environment in which you are now. It is replicated. It is essentially the workplace replicated, but for political movements. All of these things are ripe for coercive, abusive uh, elements. See the anti-work fucking nonsense we saw today in which a fucking space that is supposedly an anti-work anarchistic movement is literally being sort of like taken over by either neolibs or toxic individuals who basically are rapists or allegedly rapists i should do my due diligence on that one um so these are sort of these like post-left critiques of leftist spaces it doesn't mean anarchists or post-leftists have left the left we're not like right wingers we're just stepping back in a different axis of direction, right? You got the the left, right, and the left, uh, the uh, the leftist. I'll do it for your screen. The leftist just goes, "Oh, okay. I'm just gonna take a step back from that space so I can analyze it correctly." That is post left analysis, and it's an anarchistic praxis uh, or practice of uh, of critiquing leftist ideologies and leftist mechanisms of action. Post anarchism is really, I look, post-anarchism is a, a meta-ethical analysis and challenging of traditional uh, anarchist practices, but I like to compress it down to a really, really simple sound bite. Post-anarchism is the idea that you were already an anarchist, you just didn't know it, and that you got brainwashed, propagandized, and the anarchist that you were born as was basically stolen from you by society, by family, by culture, that sort of thing. But the uh, but the idea behind post-anarchism is that fundamentally, we're all starting from the position of an anarchist. You just have to know that, and once you know that, boom, you're already there. It's that simple. It's like how, so there you go. Post left, post anarchist, which is the type of anarchist Kai is. If you're wondering what 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 are you? Are you fucking? I'm not an ancom. I'm not an ansin. I'll advocate for and talk about various things, but at the end of the day, I'm an anarchist first and foremost. And the type of anarchist I am is a post left, post anarchist. I believe we're all start. We all start from anarchistic spaces historically and sort of birthright wise, um, intellectually, we all start from that space. We all inherently understand it and it's stolen from you. And then the post left stuff, you know, I have criticisms. Uh, tech support post left is the left, but actually looking in the mirror. Correct. Yeah. It's about, it's about looking at yourself. It's about an analyzing the left. And one of the best tools we have to do that analysis is anarchism. So yeah, it's an anarchistic analysis of the left. It's about holding up the mirror to ourselves since anarchists belong in leftist spaces. If we're going to be there, we have to look at ourselves and say, wait a second. A lot of these leftist practices that they engage in are not anarchistic and we need to critique them as such. And the post-anarchism bit. Love that you got it. Uh, fair enough, Mosh. Uh, Puddle, Twitter understanding of post-leftism is functionally deficient. Um, deficient. It is functionally deficient. The internet, Twitter... And terminally online leftists do not understand what post-leftist analysis is because they aren't anarchists. It Post-leftism is born of anarchism. And so if you aren't an anarchist and you don't have understanding of theory, if you don't have these sorts of like insights, engaging in post-left theory is not your venue and you shouldn't be doing it. Twitter doesn't understand shit. 
Twitter understanding is generally functionally deficient. Yeah, Twitter's understanding of everything is functionally. Re- um, yeah. Oh yeah, Crystal, like fucking yeah, functionally goofy. Yes, Kaiser. <laughs> I wish I could use the other word we all know I want to use. Kai's tap dancing around a word, and we all know what it is. <laughs> fucking, I want it. I want it back. I want that word back. Uh, Saul Newman, the best summary of post-anarchism? Yes. Uh, Saul is the best uh, summary of post-anarchism, though... If you want to get into the deep dive, wordy, uh, Dwayne Roussel, um, after post-anarchism... This is the this is the heavy lifting version of post anarchism. Um, but yes, I agree. Saul Newman's uh, breakdown of post anarchism is definitely the best place to start for it, hundred percent. And if you want post leftism, you want to read Jason McQuinn. Jason McQuinn is the starting place for that. Yes, puddle. Easily co-opted term. We probably should come up with a new term, but I, I, I am notorious for fighting for the terms, right? I should probably rebrand anarchism as something else, right? Like free, fucking freedomism or some shit, right? If I were smart, but I'm willing to die on this hill. So like I, I will fight for them. Um, how do I feel about acid communism? I don't, I, I don't even know off the top of my head what the fuck acid communism is. That sounds meme Uh Yeah, I'm gonna have to read more about it. Um, freedomism sounds like something a lib right would use. That's kind of the point. That's kind of why I went there, Bleh. Um, because you're trying to capture, um, you're trying to capture space, right? Like it's a it's a it's a game of territory capture. Uh, never, Glazy, never. Um. So that's kind of why I went there because I, I could convince um, I, I could convince I, I, I've had conversations where I don't use the term anarchism or I just I know I've got time to could talk to a person. And as long as I do the lead up before I tell them this is anarchism, right? If I do the lead in and bury the lead of this is anarchism and have a conversation with a like right leaning person, we share a lot of fucking complaints but they don't usually have solutions. And that's what anarchists bring to the table is formalized theory as well as tested practice. So we can put that in. Ah, fucking awesome. Why the hell would I read a theory book of more than 10 pages? What am I, a nerd? Dude, wordy, we, Friday, last Friday, was depressing as fuck. We had, I'm not kidding you, like, four or six people in here at the time literally like why would i read books i had one guy fucking i said i was talking about the 1880s to 1920s labor movement in america he says that's a lot of history i don't want to learn that we had one dude literally like lolling fucking books as a concept i was like dude last friday was depressing as fuck lots of dummies Lots of dummies. Yeah, it was a brain cell killer. Dude, it was a brain cell killer. Like, sim- simultaneously, I'm saying there was like four or six of them. Like, at, But over the course of the stream, there was like, I don't know, a dozen or two? It was depressing. It was like, holy fuck, the dummies are out in force. The resolution, I could not handle all those fucks. Yeah, I get it, Wordy. I get it. Yeah, crypto bro, dude. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure, tech support, for sure. Uh, 
before Mao, so anti-communist thought, or what was it again? I, I don't know what you're asking, Willada. I have no idea what you're asking, Willada. Sorry. Um, I saw a brilliant takedown of a fucking communist the other day. Um, <gasps> yay! Gemma got into uh, the music composition course that she w she applied for. Everybody go congratulate Gemma in fucking the commons. Um, I don't think I've ever felt more doomed on a proudly radical stream than Friday. Dude, Friday was rough. It was rough. Um, yeah. Fuck. Hey, it was, yeah, like I came off that stream, like just. We dumped right into voice chat, and I was like, immediately, I'm like, holy fucking god, how many dumb people, ex it was bad, it was bad, it was bad. And I just like, these were like chuds that like, it, these were legitimately like people who were anti-intellectual. We had one dude comment to like, oh, we got people up here, uh, up in here that know things. Like there was literally a dude criticizing people knowing things. What the fuck? It was, it was bad. It was bad. It was depressing. It's like, oh, we're doomed. We're doomed. <laughs> we're fucking doomed, man. Imagine surrounded by that every day of your life in person. Oh my God. I fucking put a bullet in my brain. Wait, we got the clip? We got the clip. Ah, uh, fucking gur. Sure, it was criticism, not a cry for info. I mean, oh, uh, fucking, we drove him off. Nonsense. Uh, dude, Gur is great. Dude, Invader Zim is one, is an amazing show. Top twenty five. Top twenty five. I love Invader Zim. Fucking Gur is great. Zim is great. I fucking dude. The whole that show is brilliant. Uh, Banda, call me anti vaxxer today. You believe all those capitalist studies? Oh lord. Just get your fucking vaccine and shut the fuck up. That's tech support. That's literally the beginning, middle, and end of the conversation that I have at this point. You believe? Well, what about? No, get your fucking vaccine and shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's I'm done. I'm fucking sick of it. Oh yeah, Gur 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 has way more brains than the people on Friday stream. Yeah, yeah, that was fucking rough. It was, dude. I'm telling you, it was fucking rough. We walked out of that one going, "Oh, we're fucked." So, yep. Um, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Hmm. Jesus Christ, did that really happen? Peloton lost $942 million in valuation because people made fun of a TV commercial. Is that really fucking... Does anybody know what the fuck that's about?
Sex and the City is one of those pop cultural touchstones that resonates. News only. Inspired writer. Could like, yeah. The and of course, take up so many. Why is this not the fucking show me the thing? Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, it's working great, guys. Nah, it's, totally a, it's totally a functional system. It's totally a functional system. Yeah. Yeah, they lost a billion dollars of value, apparently, because a fucking ad. Oh, you read this. There's no pictures. This is this is the ad. Yeah, I know. I don't sign in. Twist the holiday season and joy filled the town, except for Scrooge with his perma frown. Ow! The gift of a Peloton bike did touch his soul. Riding fast, flowing proud, getting hella swole. You can do it. I'm doing it. Was Scrooge a new man? Yes. Oh, without doubt. When your workout's a joy, it's a joy to work out. That's... Wait, seriously? Jesus Christ. Nah, it's fucking great. No, it's great. The nah, system's totally functional. It's totally functional. Don't worry about it. Pay no attention. Holy shit. I to worry. I don't even get it, but that's not the point, is it, really? Um, the fact that you could wipe a billion dollars off of a fucking company's valuation because of a shitty ad, that's the problem. Dude. Level! Thank you for the gift sub level. Fucking a resolution. Congratulations. It all started with Mr. Mr. Big dying on a Peloton in Sex in the City, and then the ad campaign was their cleanup, if I recall. Jesus Christ. Your resolution. We're all too anarchists to get it. <laughs> is this is this is this is this some capitalist shit that I'm too anarchist to get? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. We're like, we're all just sitting around confused going, but why? Two anarchists to get it. Yeah, I love it. Uh, well, puddle, because the company's overvaluated and there had to be a stock, there had to be a price correction or valuation correction eventually. And the valuation correction hinges upon some just one, like, you know, break in the armor. beast it is a real bike is way cheaper how much does a fucking peloton piece of shit cost also are they still selling you could probably pick them up real quick now <laughs> um holy shit they want fifteen hundred dollars They want $1,500 for that bike. Oh, yes, please. Compare the cost. This will be fucking hilarious. Holy shit. I'm down. Let's do this. This is fucking ridiculous. Um, Yeah, let's get started. Hey, yeah, just, my, just myself. How much do I spend a month on exercise? None? Like, zero? Am I not? I can't hit zero. I'm not allowed to put zero in. I'm not allowed to put zero. It is... There's no... I can't... Yep. We're doing a one. Oh, I work out, oh, geez. I mean, I work out six times a week. Uh, I mean, I kind of work out seven times a week, to be frank. 
Oh, wait, how many type workouts are we talking about? Like, uh, cause I do, oh God, hang on. Um, oh God, I, it's gonna be 10. It's gotta be 10 because it's over that. Um, how much time do you spend getting to and from uh, workouts? Uh, how long does it take me to go from this room to my garage? Um, let's, wait, I'm not allowed to select. I'm not allowed to select zero. They've got zero minutes. Hold, you can't. You can't see this. There's a pop up. They've got zero minutes on their fucking pop up. But I can't select it. They've got zero minutes. Not allowed to choose it. See, five minutes. Zero takes it back to thirty default. Oh, what is bike? Oh my God, what is bike plus twenty five hundred dollars? So how much am I saving? Oh, look, the bike doesn't pay for itself at all. Oh, and they're calculating three hours and 20 minutes travel time per month because they won't let me choose the amount of time because I work out in-house. Interesting. <clears throat> so please, please, um, uh, pay at once. $3,000 a year. For a stationary bike. Show me this shit. Total body powered by immersive technology. Uh, wait, that's not a bike. That's just a fucking screen. You know, I already got a, like a TV and a YouTube fucking connection, right? Like I don't need like. Wait, is that. Is that its own or is that... Okay, that's that's an Apple Watch. All right. This is a fucking scam and a half. Buck, I'm with Buckshot on that one. Fuck, it better give me a blowjob and cook dinner for that price. Holy fuck. Three grand for fucking, yeah, 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 live classes. Uh, fucking, dude. I, I don't give a shit, Cassidy. I don't give a fucking shit. Jesus Christ. I get live classes. I, I already know my workout routine, and I jump on voice chat and talk to a bunch of you fuckers, and I get, like, live interaction. See? Woo-wee. Isn't that crazy? Fuck it for free too. It is. It's a fucking. It's a fucking Twitch stream and an off-brand Android tablet strapped to a cheap, pe a cheap piece of shit for three fucking grand. Wait, are they actually selling the Black Mirror bikes? Yeah. Oh, cat! I'm down. Basically gamified working out. Jesus. We're doomed. <laughs> We're doomed. <laughs> doomy doom doom doom. Oh wait, what do I got? Uh video producer. No, no fuck it, what am I doing here? Jesus Christ. Need more scotch. Be right back. <laughs> oh wait, I'm getting creator updates for fucking Twitch. What? 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 Updated messaging on deleted and suspended channel pages. We've updated the error messaging on channel pages that have been deleted by the account holder or suspended as a result of community guidelines or DMC violations. So it's clear why the content you aren't trying to uh, you're trying to view is inaccessible. Wow, thanks. That's super useful to the community. Wow, whatever will we do without you guys? Said the C word. 
<laughs> Alright, I'm fucking done. I'm fucking done. Who's who's whose boy is a drooler? Who's 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 fucking or whose person is a drooler? I don't know what fucking drooler is fucking it's one of you fuckers, I think. Maybe Buddhist. I forget who's who who fucking whose person the drooler is. Buddhist? I think it's Buddhist. Yeah. So we're gonna raid over to the drooler. Um Good, good, good ratio too. I see, I see the count. I see who or the amount that are going over. I approve. I approve. Uh, usually, I chastise y'all for not being like down for the raid. Um, so we're gonna raid over to the drooler. Uh, Caleb's. Well, we're raiding out. It's Buddhists. Okay, cool. Well, Buddhist is streaming, so we're gonna raid over to drooler. I raided Buddhist like four times last week or some shit like that. Um, either way, I'll be in VC a little bit afterwards. Uh, if y'all really want to hear Kai speak his mind, I'll be in VC probably. Um, so fucking public loser are approved. Um, but yeah, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for the fucking all that shit. Um, like, you know, you know, you guys know I love you. You know, I'm grateful for your existence. You know, I'm grateful that you're here and we do this fucking thing. It's a whole... It's a whole thing. Either way, let's go say I had a drooler, and I will catch y'all later.